Hi everyone and welcome to Super Sunday here on the APAT show. Uh, tonight we've got a couple of tearaways on the virtual couch in big Liverpool fans Steve Bailiff and Andy Kingen. Uh, Steve and Andy will be calling your play on the final night of this week's Poker Squads and they will be overlooking play on the roller also. Uh, so we have the boys to look forward to and a lot more besides. Uh, I'll be back with Lee, Steve and Andy after this. <laughs> We've got the likely lads on tonight. <laughs> the likely lads. Well, we've, we've certainly got a bunch of winners Lee, on, the, uh, on the show. Yeah. Can you hear me, Lee? I can hear you, yeah. Oh, there we go. Sorry, I lost you there for a mo. We've got the likely lads on tonight, eh? Yeah, we've got some... Uh, well, the, the studio is full of, um, of winning Liverpool uh, <laughs> supporters. I don't know how I'm going to cope for a Sunday night, but... Uh, you know, the important thing is a Sunday night, obviously, it's all about the poker. We've got lots going on, but we'll just get the guys straight on the show. So a warm welcome to Steve and Andy. How are you doing, guys? Evening. Good evening, gents. You all right? <laughs> very well, boys. Very, very well. And, uh, you know, how has your weekends been? Yeah, it's been quite messy. I've been out partying all weekend. Well, I was going to say, so it, it, it's quite apt with the photo. The photo looks good. But, uh, <laughs> but actually, how he feels now, yeah. T t to be honest, y you look refined, Andy. I have to say, you look refined in that picture. <laughs> Steve looks like he's been on it on for about about three to four weeks, which, to be honest, pretty standard. I mean, that's how he generally looks. Uh, so, you know, are you are you still in party mode, Andy, over the football, or is that done now? Is that in the uh, in the books, and we'll move on to next season? Oh, I've, I've done plenty of partying at home. Um, <laughs> I haven't been allowed out yet. The wife won't let me out. So, <laughs> oh, it sounds very yeah. sensible. Maybe are we going to see yeah, a sensible yeah. Andy King in tonight? Maybe we will, Lee. What do you think? Well, you, you never know. I mean, but uh, <laughs> it's very difficult, isn't it? Because, because I mean, we had we had a couple of days where Liverpool seemed like it was just party central, and I don't know whether then everyone kind of just went, oh, okay, we need to be a bit more sensible about this, and and. It's all kind of relaxed a little bit. Um, and then you went and dropped points at home. Am I allowed to even say that? Or is that, you know? Uh, listen, let's, let's not, I tell you what, it's far too early to go there, I think. Far too early, but we will go there. But, you know, who do we ha have along for the ride, Lee? Uh, so we've got uh, Tris Chaplin uh, is there. Andy Bayliss is there. Don Logan, Simon Lawler, Warren Brooks. Uh, we've got Peter Wigglesworth. Frank Bailey, Asa McGrath is there. It says evening, all evening to you, Asa, as does indeed uh, Tristan. Uh, Dan Alston is there. Eddie Niascu is there as well. Scouse, of course, is watching. Uh, Simon says, is Des standing two feet away from the mic? Does that mean I'm I'm too far away or too close? Not entirely sure. Uh, I can't says, tell whether that's actually. I can't tell whether that's actually a, a, a forty <laughs> complete in total, <laughs> you know, or not. You, I'm not sure. Are you there, Des? Are you there? Uh, okay. <laughs> Andy says evening, Jen. So I assume. I assume Lee, because he's here. He's amongst us. That he's saying that to the guys, the guys out there in the uh, in the watcher uh, in the watcher land. Lou Brush, our very own Shug Kearney, is there as well. Uh, as Scouse adds, hi all. He slightly, even sounded slightly hungover when he said hi all there, I have to say. That's the way I read it. Uh, Colin McCarthy is there going for another big Sunday night, I have no doubt. Dave L. London Potsy Friday Night Poker is there as well, Mr. Potts. Um, Eddie says hi, everyone. So uh, a ton of folks in. I, I bet they're all playing tonight, Lee. We've a, we've a big old night. Uh, what, what should the guys be looking out for? So it's uh, Sunday night, which is obviously a culmination of the poker squads. Uh, 109 runners in that, 57 remaining. We're paying top 16. I'll keep you updated on what's to go. I think it's um, it's actually JFS's to to lose tonight from the team event. But the as usual, the MVP is all up for grabs. But our main focus uh, to start with tonight is going to be the Sunday roller. Uh, just shy of two and a half thousand dollars in the prize pool. Uh, 52 runners uh, made it through to this. We've got nine remaining. Top prize tonight, Des, uh, nearly $850. Nice. It goes down a little bit every week, as you'd expect. People are going back to work, um, but nice, you know, great. I'd have that. Thank you very much. Buy yourself a new iPhone if 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 you needed a new iPhone with that sort of cash. <laughs> Do you need a new iPhone then? 
Is that what uh, you, I have to say suggesting? I'm surrounded. I'm actually quite surrounded by iPhones at the moment. Uh, some of them are a bit older than others. Some of them have seen better days. Some of them have just too many compromising pictures on there. I think I need to sort of just strip them of all of that stuff pretty darn quickly. Ah, I don't believe that for one second. Excellent. So, guys, um, what are you still? What are you both still playing tonight? So we know where where we stand. I'll, I'll just jump in first on the squads. Uh, I've just busted Don Logan, which is good. Good. He's, he's no, it's not good for Don. <laughs> Oh, it's good for us because we want to win, don't we? Oh, they've smashed it anyway. Anyone else. Well, if he was unlucky anyway, I sucked out on him, but he only had a couple <laughs> of people out. Uh, no one's, no one's stopping Don Fess. Better luck next time. I tell you, I think tonight's the one, Lee. We talked about member uh, takeover over the last uh, couple of weeks, and it's not quite, it's not quite, they've been great fun, but it's not quite been a member takeover. I think we might struggle to get a, a word in edgeways tonight. What do you think? Let him, um, let him, let him go. With so, so, Steve, you're just in the, in the squads. What about yourself, Andy? Uh, yes, done the squads. Luckily, it's been up and down. Um, out the road as well. That was um, epic. Up and down constantly. Um, finally got cooler in the end. But, you know, that's the game. So I'm just yeah, I'm just trying to think from a squad's point of view for you guys. Let's... Uh, We've I got mean, yeah, you were, third, you were third going into tonight, weren't you? So um, very much in with, a, in with a shout. I mean, it's, it'd be hard push to catch JFS at the top. But um, yeah. you could certainly you catch the head mob in second. Ago, no, you said that two weeks ago. We well, I know, that. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Can't happen again. Well, Steve, Surely. Steve. <laughs> he, sa he says we. It was him, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that was what he was going for. It was a very thin brag, yeah. wasn't it? it? Was pretty much kind of a that was that was that the week where where Dan Austin pretty much just didn't really do very much. Well, actually, he's not he's not had the best of weeks this week, is he really? Oh, no, uh, I'm just looking at his scores now. Oh, he has actually. Yeah, he, uh, yeah. he fell asleep two weeks ago and didn't even <laughs> reg for the last game. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy. Not easy being a top player. I'm telling you. Oh dear, oh dear. Well, we've got a final table in the. Uh, we've got a final table in the roller. Um, that's now uh, we've got to that point. Um, so Mark Griffiths is chip leader in that. Uh, Peter Monroe there. Uh, Lewis Tabib's there. Adam Bromley's there. Uh, Dave Amos as well. Uh, Milan Alexandra and uh, Rachel Lee uh, is made it in on there as the short stack as well. So good luck to all of you guys. We're actually paying top seven in this. So. Uh, they'll have to play hand for hand now for the uh, for the money bubble, Des, yeah? Lovely. Well, uh, as you said, we are down to eight uh, there, guys. Um, so what's up top, did we say, Lee? Let's have a look. 847 um, $847. Nice. And we've got an all-in a call straight away. Milan with King 10 of diamonds against the Queens of Lewis. And he hits a king on the flop and ends up uh, hitting three more diamonds as well to get the flush. So uh, double up for him. Well, I'm glad to see uh, Rachel Lee on the final table. I, uh, I donated her quite a few chips, I think, today. Did you? You were saying that before when she got lucky on it, Andy. She, she got lucky. On the phone. It's putting them to good use. Uh, That's the main yeah, thing. It's played, I have to it's played say. well. It's played well and it's me for a mug. <laughs> so, Dave, <laughs> listen. not what you were saying on the phone before. <laughs> Listen, guys, Al Armitage, we are we are indeed fortunate, has joined us. So welcome to Al. Uh, celebrating, no doubt, a North London derby win, uh, I'd have thought. Al, he hasn't had too many good things to shout about on the football front this season, but he'll be very pleased with that one. Uh, who else have we got? I didn't Asa. watch the game. Was it, any, was it any good? I saw the result, but was it was it a decent game? or? Didn't see it. No. No, the, the, days of, anyone's got a... the days of a North London derby being essential... Uh, viewing, they seem to be a bit behind us at the moment. I have to oh, say, I'm but sure, uh, there I'm we go. I'm sure they'll catch up, yeah. Asa, Asa says, my three teammates are all gone already, so he's feeling rather alone. If I had some lonely music, I'd play it for him, but I don't, I'm afraid. Uh, Potsy says, not watching, just listening in. I've binned LBC in favour of you lads in the evening now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, Potsy, times are, times are tough. Times are tough. It's like a bad episode of 28 Days, this, isn't it, really? Uh, Wayne Parker has joined us, Wakefield Wayne. This man has more goals in UK team championships with different teams than anybody else on the planet. Uh, Stefan Fisher. He's like a gun is, for hire, isn't he? Oh, he's, he's like, like yeah. a gun. He, absolutely. It's, I mean, it's a small gun. It's a small gun, but it's potent, right? It's potent. Stefan Fisher is with us as well, as indeed Carl the Captain Pilgrim is back, uh, I have to say. And uh, I hope you're well, uh, Carl, Stefan, and Wayne. 
Um, so what do you want to do, Lee? What will we do? Should we just hand it well, over to got, the boys? Well, we've got the um, so we've got the roller up. So we'll um, we'll watch that as uh, Rachel got a, a double up as well uh, not too long ago. Um, so we'll do that. I mean, well, I guess the thing is obviously obviously Steve's been on the show before, so we had a good chat with Steve, but but don't really know much about Andy's background from a kind of um, poker. So how did you get into oh. poker, Andy? Um, it was in the army initially, I think. Um, I'm sorry, I've just um, I've just shifted there with Ace Queen. Got uh, Deborah, Deborah Roberts, unfortunately, broke up with Ace King and a, and a bit of a bit of Queen on the flop and the squad. Oh so dear! You both you both at it then? Yeah, yeah sorry, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Deborah, we'll yeah, get you I back for that. In, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure she will. Like. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I picked it up in, in the army initially, I think, if not just before, and then uh, bumping into Steve in Northern Ireland sort of escalated it a bit, because he was, he was really into it at that time. Um, yeah, I really is that how you guys then, is that how you guys kind of became friends and meeting up at, um, oh, when, when I mean, over in Northern Ireland? Or? I first met Steve on a football pitch. Um, I gave him some right abuse initially. <laughs> I was a bit of an angry man back then, though, so... Can't believe how quiet I just Andy King it sounds. Because of that <laughs> and so was your um so your win in in Austria, was that your was that your first APAT event or had you played any before that? Oh no, yeah. I, I, I played one or two. I think I played one um first, but I didn't realise it was an APAT. I qualified online for the tournaments, didn't realise, you know, what APAT was, what it stood for and you know what you guys do. Um so I, and it just turned up on the Saturday, not expecting much. Um, and uh, I think I ran Kings into Aces early on, so it just left me short. And I had loads of work going on at home, so I just kind of just jibbed it off. Didn't think much of it, but then it was only when I went out away with Steve and you guys to Austria that I realised, oh, this is the same A path I knew with them I played that thing. So, so it was only like the second game, the Austria one, I think. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, that's, that's pretty. And that was that, a that was a crazy final table because you had a guy that went on to um to win a WSOP bracelet on that final table if I remember rightly. Is that right? So, yeah. Yes, did, yeah. Did he finish yeah. third? Was it? Which one was this Lee? Yeah, I think he did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, we're talking about in Vienna. Yeah, yeah. Martin uh Kleiser, Kleiser I think. He won a PLO bracelet. That's right about 2 to 3 months later. Um full tilt badged and all. I mean, was that uh you know, was that uh sort of uh, off-putting or intimidating at all that you were sat in that final table with a uh, a full tilt badged player? <laughs> no, not at all. I didn't know who he was, obviously. But... Oh, I'd never heard of him either, I have to say. I <laughs> <laughs> but you, you, I don't think you can go into poker um, being a, being anxious of, of what people are, you know, to cards dictate a lot. And um, you, you've got to be. You've got to be uh, bold, haven't you, I suppose? Yeah, it's one of the great levellers, uh, you know, in, in call it what you will, a game, competition, sport, whatever. Uh, it, it's one of the great levellers, poker, because you can sit with anyone, really, can't you? And uh, yeah. if you've got a degree of knowledge, um, you can you can take their chips. Yeah, that's the great thing about the game. Um, you can go either way. Obviously, I've proven that. <laughs> I'm not a statistician or, you know, I, I don't know all the percentages as well as other people. Um Oh, yeah, there's a lot of luck involved with it, which is, is how I've made my money, I suppose. So when you came back uh, from... I think there's a bit more skill there, to be honest, Andy. I think yeah, you I don't think, think you do yourself is. enough credit there. You really not. When you uh, when you came back from Vienna, Andy, did that, like, did your game or your thinking about the game change? Did you think, well, actually, you know, I can, I can, I can get a result here if I put my mind to it? Well, yeah, it was definitely eye-opening, um, but I... I don't suppose it changed because it wasn't that, that good anyway. I, it's, it must have had a nice run in the day. We, we were obviously quite heavy on the drink on that Saturday, I remember. Um, so I don't remember much of the eve that Saturday <laughs> evening when we went quite deep in. So when we went back for the second day, I was, I was you know, I was obviously a bit more sober. Uh, I, could, I could take it in more and, and understand it a bit more. Um, so are you... Yeah, what an enjoyable experience that was. Yeah, are you saying that uh, sober Andy is a better player than drunk Andy? <laughs> well, I don't know. Yeah, so <laughs> be, being aggressive drunk is is obviously uh, it, it can work, I suppose, but obviously um, it can't be relied on. Yeah, I have to say that uh, that was a bit of a legendary weekend. Uh, uh, Mr. Wilshire was there, and I remember doing an interview with him on the Saturday 
uh, you know, maybe during a break in, in play in, on day one, uh, Jen was there as well, probably not massively impressed that she was stuck in uh, a card room in Vienna. I have to say... Her, her one a, and only one APAT in, trip. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't even Vienna, right? It was Weiner Neustadt. No, no, like, yeah. It was like going to Pearly Way, you know, it was just a, an industrial sort of moon-facing zone. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I had my my funny APAT travel story the night before when I arrived at the hotel at two o'clock in the morning to find that uh, Sticky, bless his cotton socks, had <laughs> broken the... Sticky bun. Yeah, and he had broken the bloody entry to the hotel and I was stuck out there till about five o'clock in the morning. It was an absolute disaster. But if I'm not mistaken, some of you guys were stuck out there for the same time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah we, we got back at place and I remember seeing... I didn't see the incident, but I saw it was broken. We couldn't get in. Yeah, was, uh, yeah, oh, was... we had massive fun with Sticky. Though, <laughs> you know, has he, he come back? Has he turned up? Because I saw him at one point. He had a flower pot in his head. He was he was fast asleep in minus two degrees. It was like insane to watch. Yeah. So, There's Andy, no... were you one of the ones? Were you one of the ones that um, that Scouts used to fleece then in the army when you kind of when you had a bit of downtime, or uh, did, you, uh, to, did you did you did you understand? Yeah, did or did you understand the type of player that he was and therefore try to keep away from him? Well, yeah. To be honest, I could I could see he was he was a lot better player than I was at that stage, you know. Um, and Sticky Bomb was was good as well. Uh, and I, and so I didn't really get involved with with them in, in any sort of cash game or anything. Um, because I say I was I was a ranked beginner to be beginner to be honest. Um, but it was a still enjoyable game to play them at any time. But yeah, the name I don't know if you know if the name his, his surname was Bun. That's why they called him Sticky. Ah, oh, is that it? Okay, that <laughs> yeah. makes sense now. B B U double N. I dread to think why you thought it was then, Des. Oh, I dread, you, know, you know, what can I say? What can I say? I mean, you know, why didn't you call him current? <laughs> I mean, big decision here for I Dave thought. Amos. <laughs> uh, yeah, big decision here for Dave Amos. He's eventually oh, folded. Yeah. Uh, bet out onto that board. Adam Bromley's gone all in, and uh, Dave decides to fold. So listen, um, Andy, as as Lee said, we we don't know a tremendous amount about your your poker style and stuff. So t tell us, what type of player are you? You mentioned there that you know you're not necessarily the most mats of mats type players. You know, how how would you describe your game? Yes, yeah, so it's it, there is quite a bit of um, like feel to it. I suppose that's why I'm, I'm not. I, I prefer sitting live with people rather yeah. than online. You don't get much. You don't get much information. Um, but I, I, I suppose a bit passive aggressive, um, depending on the mood as well. So I can swing the moods with, yeah. with my poker as well. Um, well, it's good to have a. Yeah, well, it's good to have a variable game, right? It's good to have gears or be able to switch your. Your your playing style and confuse people around you. Yeah, exactly. So um, I had a good couple of results, um, as, as you know, with the championship games not long ago, and I played them both completely differently than the, the, the ah, first one. Um, yeah. I was really, I, I thought I was quite tight with it until later stages when I opened up, and then the other one I was, I was completely, I was really loose. And um, but the both both seems to work. I did get lucky on that second one. I was, um, Someone's reminded us recently. I think it was Gareth Howard. <laughs> Gareth oh, reminds, he's he's Gareth got he a very everyone. Gaz has oh, a God. very good memory <laughs> for when things go against him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, th I think I think it was anyway, but um, whoever was on the table who, who, um, who noticed it, um, I opened off. Well, I was I was a bit frustrated. I sort of shoved it with eighteen bigs. I think from under the gun with Queen Jack suited, which obviously is, is a stinker really. Um, Ran right to aces in the big blinds and and and, f and filled up. I think. So, but that that kicked me on to, to obviously go and win it. So you, you do need you do need a bit of luck in, what, in any sort of victory. Yeah, but as you say, Andy, you, you're quite right with it. I mean, it's it's a case of yeah, you get a little bit of luck at the time. I don't think anyone would ever say that they won a tournament whereby there was no luck involved and pretty much just everything just fell, you know, as you'd expect it to. And and actually, it'd be pretty boring if that happened, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> That, that is the, the, the one of the best bits of the game. You, you can just swing swing your style and make it as fun and enjoyable as you like by opening up on people when you're not supposed to. Steve calls a certain hand the hammer, 7-2 off suit. Oh, a lot of people so call it like the Steve hammer. Like, <laughs> yeah, so you've got the hammer. It adds, adds a bit to it, doesn't it? Um, a bit of excitement knowing that you've got the worst possible hand to play with. Oh, that is, that is horrible. Horrible. We've lost Rachel from the uh, from the roller. She oh, had pocket sevens, oh, uh, seven on the flop. Got it all in against Peter Munro, and he's rivered the straight. 
Um, oh, he had the up and down straight draw, and chip leader Peter Munro has knocked out uh, Rachel Lee in eighth place. So unfortunately, she is going to uh, bubble. Wow. Okay, that's unlucky. Uh, Rachel Lee. Really Unfortunately, oh, Andy, she, yeah, she hasn't put your uh, your chips to ultimate use. Uh, good, good to get to the final, but uh, no, no medal, as it were, no big win uh, tonight for Rachel. Unfortunately, um, so tell me, Andy. I mean, how, how do you how do you rate your online game? Do you do you play much online? Oh, rubbish, absolutely terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have I have got the results as as you've seen, but away from APAC, um, it's yeah, Lynn Court. You go and have a look on Shark Scope, whatever people do. You'll, you'll find all the answers there. It's not we better, the race. We better not. We better not do that, Lee. No. Let's not well, go to Shark Scope. It's, it's quite. I can't often the remember the last time I went. On. I can't. I genuinely can't remember the last time I went on Shark Scope. Um, I, I mean, do people still spend time tracking? I thought. I thought a lot of it now because of the data GDPR and all that kind of thing. I don't know how accurate any of it really is anymore. Is it? Is it still yeah. accurate? Must be. I suppose. I've no idea. I'd, I'd look just myself just to see see what I what my stats were, and yeah, they weren't good. But um, as, as I say, away from APAS, I don't really play much anyway. Um, yeah. And it's normally if I've, if I've been knocked out early, I'd go on then after the drink. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be at the best, the best level anyway. Yeah. So. No. And tell me, Andy, you're uh, you. So you've got. Am I right in saying you've got three young kids? Three, uh, two. two little ones. Two boys, uh, yeah. Uh, and, and to be honest, you, you, you panicked him for a minute then, Des. Well, you know. <laughs> you know yeah, well, I, yeah. my, my research was I'm very... Panicked, panicked my wife. You panicked my wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just, just going to ask about your wife and your family, obviously, and, you know, hope everybody's well through lockdown. And obviously you've taken it seriously, and that's that's good. Uh, that's really good to hear, in fact. But, oh, um, yeah. you know, is she understanding of your, your poker? You know, is she comfortable with you? spending a Sunday night or a Saturday night maybe, you know, playing online and doing all of that stuff. It sounds like you do it in moderation anyway. Well, yeah, it was in moderation until squad started and then it's uh, <laughs> like every night now. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Andy. Yeah, yeah. No, sorry, also, sorry Mrs. Cool. Andy, I have to say. <laughs> but it's yeah. like we need a decent squad so we can like rotate a bit. Yeah. Um, some, some of the lads well, you guys actually do it. You guys do it really well. I know when we talked to Steve when he was last on and we were joking about the fact that you will happily drop whoever's the lowest scoring guy in your yeah. squad, even even when you've won the whole thing, it's like that's yeah. that's the rules. So. Ruthless. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's, I think it's between me and obviously between me and Jamie this week. Um, but I, I can't even, I don't even see you know, if Jay's still in. I think you're all right. We haven't got any extra players next week, have we? Well, Bill is Bill back because Bill's been on nights this week, hasn't he? I haven't heard back of him. Um, Depends There's... on people's shifts, obviously. We've got we've got um, Will Bill. and Chan as well to come back. Yeah, but I Bill's... think it's a really nice way of doing it, actually. And it, and and actually, there's no reason why you know squads can't you know can't be like that, where there's five or six of you, and you say you just rotate it round depending on what yeah, people are doing. Bit... And I think yeah, I think you said a couple of weeks nice. back, Andy. Yeah, I think you said a couple of weeks ago. I'm actually quite nice to have a week off and just if I if I fancy playing yeah. one or two nights a week because I fancy playing, Brilliant. then I can. I think it's a good way of doing it. And it's it's a great it's it's a great little um, tournament league, however you want to describe it. Um, get in, and it, it's get it's it's got me to know a, a lot of the APAC plays I didn't really know just just know just from the name. So when we do go back to live, I can then I can hopefully put a picture uh, name to yeah. a face if you like. I think did you not? Th I think real names make such real names make such a difference, yeah. doesn't it? Oh it's, yeah. Um, yeah. I, it's, I prefer it's... real named and. I don't, I've never understood the kind of the need, the need to hide, yeah, to hide behind some sort of online alias. I've never really understood it. But I have to say, Lee, you say that it wasn't that long ago, and I, you know, I don't know how some people view it today, but it wasn't that long ago when you know uh, a lot of people would not necessarily want to be associated with poker from a you know my work. I don't want my work to know, or you know stuff like that. I don't necessarily want my friends to know because as a game, it was a bit misunderstood. You know, it was thought of as a gambling game. I still think it probably. I still think it probably is to a still certain extent. I'm, I'm yeah, sure there's yeah. still an element of that, but but I think that's why people were quite keen to sort of hide their details, which is never you know it's never a particularly good thing. But do you remember back in the early, do you remember back in the early early years of APAC when we started doing the um, international team events? Yeah. Um, I think it was specifically the the German. Team. Oh yeah, we Absolutely. we had to go, we had to go through and actually change all of their names, um, because they were you know they were really concerned that they didn't they didn't want. I think and I'm pretty sure it was due to employment. I'm pretty sure yeah. it was a case that they yeah. didn't want to be. Uh, Absolutely, you know, they, they're nice guys, no, and it wasn't an issue whatsoever for us. Um, but generally, from a reporting point of view, they were really cautious about um, 
yeah, uh, about being associated with poker. I've had numerous people come back to me over the years with, you know, emails into customer at com, just asking for their name to be removed from the forum, from li- live updates, from, you know, maybe a year prior because they were going for a new job and they were afraid of employers doing a Google search and, and finding poker. Um, so, yeah, I, I you know, I would imagine a lot of that is changing I, I just instinctively. Um, but it was pretty bad five, ten years ago. I think yeah, uh, you know, it, people... is, it is difficult, though. It's um, it is a tricky one because obviously with the, with the Internet now, it's it's so easy for people to go and, uh, and do us. And who you know, most employers now will do some sort of um, search online search of uh, yeah, potential uh, new employees. As we crack, we've got uh, Jack's versus eights versus ace ten here. Oh, well, uh, Jack on the Jack on the flop for Dave Amos. That's all she wrote, not and there we much, go. <laughs> not going to get much better than that for him. Well, I'll tell you, Lee, we have Natalie, I need nice a new song. handbag again, Bromley, in the chat box. She's just uh, she's just joined us. How are you, Natalie? I hope you're well. Uh, she's well, come in to Adam see... Is, Adam. Yeah, Adam is now third of, third of five. Yeah, so, she's... Um, you know, she's like a bloodhound. She literally has smelt the, <laughs> the fresh money and she's just gravitating towards it. I like that. That's very, very good. I thought she was just going to come in to want to discuss Saturday's game. I mean, that, that was where I was oh, going with it. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, it's still too To be silly. honest, I mean, guys, yeah, but guys, I mean, the, the reality of it is everything that Liverpool are going for now, I know yeah, we'll talk football plenty during the night, but... Um, it's all. This is all about records now, and surely it's a case of if you get them, great. If you don't, it's no big deal. So everyone can give you a bit of a rib about it, but really, it's you. You've got the most important thing, which is going to be that trophy. Yeah, that's that's ultimately it. That's that is what every Liverpool fan have wanted for the last thirty years. Yeah, I and, think this is very much that's an, it. It's an yeah. in the moment type reaction, Lee. So it's an in the moment reaction, and it's very very often it's for a short moment, right? It's a very short moment. I mean, I I, I got really annoyed. <laughs> it's embarrassing to say it. I got really annoyed on Saturday, and I'd got this new Sky. You did remote. you even stop? You even you even stopped tweeting. That's how that's I'll how annoyed you, what, you got. Yeah. I got I got this new Sky remote, and it's voice activated, and even it stopped talking to me, Lee. It was that bad. I was that bad in the house. You know. So I've got to say so. So Natalie's. Around. Natalie's in the chat, just here, just here for the glory, and then, and then she's got a question for you. So, how's that home record, home win record, Des Duffy? Yeah. All right, just Lee. Look, I'm not going to talk directly to Natalie. I'm going to, re- you know, relay this message through you. But if you could just tell Natalie that we're about to sort of uh, switch the uh, the doom the doom handle on Adam's uh, cards, right? Harsh. Just pull, That's harsh. pull the lever, pull the lever, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a very it's a very short, and I have to say, this morning I put out a nice, calm, you know, it, or life is good. Life is not bad if you're a football fan of Liverpool. So uh, yeah, and and to be honest, uh, you know, Burnley, yeah, I don't begrudge them there. Uh, I did have to. There. I, do you know what I, I do? You know what I chuckled about the most is so I think a couple of weeks prior, or maybe a week or so prior, Klopp had been interviewed talking about giving players uh, appearances for effectively to be able to pick up a medal yeah and he'd thrown the whole thing about we don't give um you know appearances away like christmas presents and we don't do the really kind of quite hard hitting you know i wouldn't dream to do the. and then to be honest he he put a weakened side out on, on saturday didn't he really well, he to start didn't really, with he didn't really uh, yeah he had a couple there of was a number of the young a number of the youngsters were out there he'd and, only two um, he'd only two and they both worked it, their place i was comfortable with it, that team yeah, and it, but yeah, it just didn't quite, yeah, go go the way. And I just if, thought, well, listen, yeah. if Mo Salad converted his his chances, um, we'd have been home and hose long before uh, Burnley got their equaliser. And do you know what? They could have turned Pope around. Was, and how good was Pope though? Oh, he was how good was Pope? Absolutely fantastic! Oh, dear, what a goalie! Dear. England's England's number one ahead of ahead of Pickford. I would say so. Chaps, yeah. what do we reckon? Hundred percent. He's only got little arms. <laughs> Lee, he's only got little arms, Lee. Pickford. <laughs> Don't need yeah, probably. To be, to be honest, it, it really wouldn't have mattered. It's the fact that he's Everton goalkeeper. It's pretty much always going to be the... Be the he mind, Henderson, the Henderson can't bar. be that... Henderson can't be that far away from um, from being in, in that shout as well, I wouldn't have thought. For, for what? Sheffield United's keeper, Blades, Blades keeper. Henderson. Henderson, yeah. Yeah, Is yeah. He, do yeah, United yeah. own him, Lee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sell yeah. him he's, in the end? Nope. No, he's still ours and will be. He, he'll be United's number one keeper, if not... Maybe, maybe even this season, but if not this season, I would imagine that the season after. I can't believe it'll be very, it'll be very long. Yeah. As soon as, as soon as we feel De Gea's, we've had enough, or somebody puts an offer in for De Gea and he wants oh, to go back to Spain to see out his career, 
You just want to have um, a word we'll, with we'll Roy Keane. I, I think Roy Keane will tell you day is, day is time is Yeah, now. well, exactly, yeah. <laughs> but ultimately, that will happen somewhere along the line. Um, Henderson's confident enough as uh, as Alexandra's all in with ace jack here against Peter's 8-9, and Peter's hit. Crikey. Yeah, Oof. Peter Munro is uh, on fire here on this final table. Knocks another one out. Happy for the other players because that's another ladder. But yeah, Henderson, I think, um, will ultimately be United's keeper. I mean, he's already proven it now in the, you know, in the Premier League. So it's just a matter of time. Yeah, uh, but Pope, he's still only twenty. He's still only twenty-two. I mean, it's um, it's ridiculous. Did you see the article uh, the other day? It had it had an England what's effectively would be an England under twenty threes team, um, and it was just insane how good this this team was it had gomez and alexander arnold in it and greenwood and rashford and sancho uh, you know um just unbelievable team uh, that are all uh, that are all getting first team experience at the moment which if you'd have said 10 years ago england players under 23s and below weren't getting that sort of uh both all in here nines versus nines but the way peter monroe's going no nope, we're good um, <laughs> I was just expecting spade spade there to be honest the way he's running at the moment but uh, yeah but it used to be 10 years ago that England under 20 you know 21 players that's just couldn't get into break into first teams in in the top yeah. divisions and now they're all doing it yeah so um, do do either of the lads Lee do either of the lads Andy or Steve you know su su support England I know you're supporting them but do you follow England because a lot of Liverpool fans don't oh no I love England um I love watching England following England I've I've lost a lot of money on them now over the last few years. <laughs> betting on them to win the World Cup and the Euros. Um which we should we should have won at least one or two of them in that time, but you just haven't got the luck when it's come. Yeah. Well and this is what you're saying. False thorns. We had the Lampard Gerrards. This is it. We had, we had look at the squad we the squads we used to have. Um as Lee was saying, they've got a good squad now. It doesn't necessarily turn into trophies, does it? No, I have to say, I mean, you know, I, I saw that interview with uh, Ferdinand and Lampard and I think Gerard was at the table as well where uh, you know despite the fact Ferdinand and Lampard came up together at West Ham and were best pals and, and all of that you know this nonsense about they didn't talk uh, you know when they were all out playing with England well, they, were all, they were all sat in but they were all sat in separate groups for at lunch and stuff. Just what ridiculous. they were saying, weren't they? They just they were all in their own little pockets, more worried about their club games. Well, I have to say, I, you know, I'll give that to case. Can't can't see him standing for that sort of nonsense. So hopefully, this uh, this new no. young generation can produce the sort of results that uh, that old. I'd imagine. I'd imagine those players, that golden generate, that golden generation, as we called it, will look back and go, "Full of regret." Yeah. Madness. Why did we? Yeah. Why did we not do? Yeah. Just Absolute do like the guys madness. are doing now. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Oh dear, oh dear. Uh, completely agree. So we're down to four in the roller. Um, so these guys are now all guaranteed two hundred and seventeen dollars, and at eight four seven up top. Uh, nice. And uh, Steve is now one of the short stacks in this squads game. He's currently thirty first out of the thirty three remaining. Uh, is he? Whereas, <laughs> yeah. Let's no, add a bit of pressure. Whereas Andy is up in sixteenth at the moment. <laughs> so. We pretty much an average stack. Swing. Steve must have, uh, <laughs> had, yeah. I, I lost the flip ace queen. I was going to say. Three jacks. Um, Who was that against, Scouts? Louis Tober. I'm in a flip with him again now. Bloody hell, um, he's, he's everywhere. I'm good at the minute. Oh, I just got rivered. It's <laughs> <Wow. laughs> horrible, isn't it? Ace King v. Is that five. Louis? Is that Louis? T was that Louis Tabib? Yeah. Yeah, he was the one. Yeah, that okay. Jack. He's here yeah. on the final table as well, Steve. And he's on the he's on the final table of the heart of the roller oh, as well. Uh, he's he's well, from he's, um, well he's anyway. from yeah he's from Austria. Been played most of the squads actually. Lewis has. Yeah, I've seen his name a few times. Should have been played. I have uh, two flips, lost them both. Oh, oh lucky my friend. Man. You've had so your you'd... you've had your sorry, run good sorry, though, haven't you? you? Yeah, you'd have, yeah, you'd so have had to go. You're just going to have to go win it now. Like, it's only, yeah, yeah, Steve, you'd have had to go really deep to improve your score anyway, would you? Oh, no, me, me, me third. I've had like three or four rubbish scores. Oh, okay. So yeah. the, the, the low one would have been fine. I'm probably See, Des, I love I, I love this, Des. This is great because I, I often wonder when we set squads up, I was like, well, I wonder how, how seriously these teams will See, take it. Will they understand? Right. And, and they all know exactly what they what score they need to improve and therefore where they need to get to to do that. Because I often th find on this Sunday, 
when I'm putting the results in, I look at some of the early exits and I think, what's going on there? How have they bust this so early? But of course, they've, they've, they're the ones that have gone, I need to do really well. So I need to go deep. And they've, they've done that as, as the Gaz Howard um, explanation from weeks back when he was on the show was you either um, you either go really deep or you you bust early, one or the other. Well, what I'm and looking for here, look Lee, and hi to everyone, we're, we're on the old vid. I was going to say, um, please warn me when you're going to switch to the vid. <laughs> yes. How can I warn as, you? As my, as my hands are going everywhere, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm explaining what I'm doing. There's nobody else in the room, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> um, what I want to see is the Neil Warnock moment, right? I want to see Andy turn to Steve and say, it's not bloody good enough, and throw a cup of tea across the room or something. That's what I want to see. Uh, we should be doing that with Dan. He's he's been the uh, <laughs> the standout consistency in our team. We've we've all been a bit up and down, but Dan seems to nail it quite regularly. I love. I mean, Dan Dan got involved in the chat regarding the um uh the Russian players the other day, and and I wasn't sure how he was going to take us. I th- I thought Dan's approach might be one of um oh well you know everyone should get to play, but actually he was very much a no. I'm I'm not playing this five dollar tournament for because it's a five dollar you know tournament or i'm playing because i want the team spirit of winning it and the, the competition of winning the whole thing that's, so actually that's i want it. a level Morning playing field really yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, so i was I, quite I, I was surprised that was his that was his take on it but uh but actually quite quite glad that actually that was his view as well yeah he just needs to stay away on the important moments yeah well, he's, the thing is he's, oh, no, he's got a busy job these important. days and he gets quite sleepy doesn't he yeah oh, i can imagine it with his with his little yeah. <laughs> so, have you guys? Do you guys know what you need to do now? Then is it is it looking? I think Andy needs to win. Basically, we were under an eighty behind, so it's. I don't think winning's going to do it. Um, now you um. There's that, one. There's the one second. seven. Yeah, one seven seven is the points up top tonight. Oh, so, that's quite. Um, yeah, we were under an eighty behind, so it's, I'm not going to improve that much. So. so how 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 would you say that, Andy? Uh, because of course, one one hundred and eighty is a it's a famous number. Would you say one hundred and eighty? Or would you say one hundred and eighty? Do you want me to actually say it? Yeah, shall we? <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> there we go. I was going to say you've got to, you've got to motivate Scouse, but you haven't. You've got to motivate yourself. So Scouse has to say it to you. Oh, and we see an all in here. Bloody and, hell! Uh, is the Jack going to take it? Yeah, it is. I mean, Dave was wow. Dave was um, yeah. was short. So we've got our final three now with a wow. massive chip leader in Peter Munro, uh, Lewis to be in second place, and Adam Bromley is the short stack. Good luck to the. Three of you guaranteed now three hundred and sixty three dollars natalie's just working out at the moment what what she can get for that um should do all right get half a well, i don't know a, a maybe a, a kind of a, a handle from a handbag or something like that maybe <laughs> about it it's like it's like des and his ferrari isn't it i can buy a you know it's like a jigsaw oh, plan back carpet isn't it yeah, yeah that's right about 15 years ago i drew a picture of one and i've just you know taking each little piece at a time. Yeah. So where we are with squads then, uh, JFS are still out top. They've only got Acer uh, left playing. Uh, Het and Mob are in second. They've got two left in. They should have Ryan and Gary Roberts. Gary won the um, won the championship game last night. So, um, although I can't... Well, oh, yeah, there's Gary here, and actually. Ryan. Yeah, he's doing well. Yeah. Yeah, and then Andy is the only one remaining for Purple Ack. He's in third place at the moment. Uh, they're being chased by the A team, who've only got Colin McCarthy left in. But we all know what Colin's capable of doing on a Sunday night. Uh, A up Cockers, who had a cracking run last week, uh, should have Shane and Simon still in for them if they're playing tonight. There's Simon. Can't see Shane tonight. Oh, there, I can see Shane as well. So A up Cockers have got two left in as well, and they're chasing you hard as well. Uh, and uh, Celtic Storm, Frank and Brendan, both still in as well, and they're not that far off you. So we've yet yeah, we've got um, a lot on the go here. Thirty-one left. We'll know a little bit more in the next uh, you know, the next half hour or so. I'd have thought. Uh, meanwhile, Adam's all in on the roller final table. Decision for Peter. Here we he's go. He's got a monster stack, but he's decided to fold. This Peter Monroe, it's like what a record he's had over the last 10, 11, 12 weeks. Yeah, and he's called this time. Adam shoved again, and Peter's mm-hmm. called this time. It's ace queen versus eight. It's a race, and doesn't look like Adam's going to get there, and he doesn't. 
And um, Peter's just, I mean, Peter's just run so well on this final table. Um, wow. But not, not with, you know, just kind of won his flips and, um, and when he's needed to get there, has done with the, with his drawing hands. Um, <laughs> Natalie's saying half, half, 80% minimum. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> well, Adam's going to finish in third for $363, but that is not a bad return for, um, what about four hours work? And he'll be happy with that at the poker table. Well, sat at home anyway. So, and uh, we've just lost Frank uh, from Squads Game, so we're down to thirty now. Ace is actually the short stack, uh, but I don't. I just don't see anyone that's going to be able to catch. Could easily catch JFS. Um, I don't think because I don't think I don't think Andy can now because they were. Yeah, they you were 170 off, so you're not going to be able to. I think the Hetton mob could could do it. The trouble is, is Gary's still in, and he's already got a decent score. Um, but potentially Ryan and and Gary from the Hetton mob could catch JFS. Um, uh, obviously Ryan's not lost Acer well, yet. Yeah, yeah, not lost Acer yet. Um, but he is a short stack at the moment. He'll be hanging on for as many points as he can. Scouse is very quiet. Is he still yeah. there? Yeah, I'm still here. I, on on Acer, I think he's got good points, hasn't he? So he won't really improve his points, will he? No, yeah. His lowest um his lowest score, counting score at the moment is thirty eight or thirty eight point two four. So I wouldn't have thought so. Um and cause me me and um, Jamie was in quite deep as well after we got them all out. So we should get at least that three points we need. So no pressure, Andy, but the wing gives us it. What gives us second? Do you mean? <laughs> no, no, because we only hundred and seventy odd points up top. We'll have improved at least three or four points on on the top. So if you win it, oh uh, right, I see what you're saying. Well, yeah, that that that's if Gary doesn't do doesn't smash. He's doing well here on our table. So. No, so no, we'll, we'll say so. Say so. I don't think I don't think you'll be able to catch. Yeah. I don't think you'll be able to catch him. Um, you're a hundred and. You're 174 points off him now, so yeah, it's not it's not going to be doable. Even though you have actually, no. even though both Jamie and yourself, Scouse, have picked up some additional points tonight, uh, picked up about 10 more points each. Um, it's pretty, it's not quite going to be enough, I think. But um, yeah, the trouble is because the the, the Hetton guys are about 60 points ahead of you, but they've still got two players in. So yeah, yeah. That's so it's the problem. Really, it looks like the Hetton lads are the um, the danger up top if you like yeah if they could if they could both run deep they could potentially do that but obviously ace is not going to uh to going to give up anytime soon he will uh yeah no right he will ace hang in a, for as long as he can absolutely he'll be there to the bitter end yeah that is for sure yeah well ace has carried their team this week i think <laughs> yeah, gallif howard's been dreadful he's got no points has he terrible player. player terrible player Azaraz I don't think he bothered, you know. I think he just read and sat out for all the games. Uh, he he literally has his best score for the week was was forty points on Monday. That's it. Well, he has well, played all week, to be fair. A couple of weeks, like you know. So, um, I mean, people have been winning Gaz's, you know, buy-ins this week, so. But yet he's going to be in the winning in the winning team. I think. I mean, I think Tim Magnus joined um, the my stack team, and then they won it like two weeks out of three or something like that. And Tim was like, "This is all right, this isn't it?" <laughs> Who, who's won the most? Has anyone won it three times yet? No, I think it's. Uh, I think we've had uh, a couple of people now have won it twice. But um, and this is week fourteen, so uh, no one's done three yet. At least I don't oh, think. But if, the, if they, if they, if they have, somebody will tell us in the chat box because they're uh, they're all very quick with their bragging rights. If they have. So. Well, listen. Speaking of which, Asa has come back and said, "No, we fight to the end, and we expected no less." And Gaz is indeed there as well. Uh, good evening to you, Gaz Scouse. I would have done better. <laughs> if you tell Asa as well, it's a shame his team didn't fight till the end as well. He'd been a joke this year. Rubbish. What a terrible defence for the title. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, hold on. We, we just flipped back into football. Just poking, just putting a poke in. Yeah, I was thinking about who's on Ace's poker team at the moment. 
not one shout of Man City bottlers, but we got it all year last year. I tell you what, finishing one point behind. I tell you what, listen, um, yeah, yeah, uh, there's no excuse really. Um, City have had a, they've had a, a weird season. They've been brilliant and just poor, uh, but you know they could still end up with three trophies, which uh, would be a bloody great season, I have to say. Um, what did you make of their draw in the uh, the European Cup? So I think I think we're going to have a decision tomorrow. Is it tomorrow? Yeah, apparently. Yeah, apparently tomorrow, tomorrow is going to be a decision. Yeah, so I, I genuinely hope it gets overturned. I really do. Oh I, well, well we'll wait. You know, I mean, I I understand. I why why do you, why do you hope. hope? Why do you hope? Justice needs to be served, but in the same respect, you do get banned. They're probably clutch United in in the Champions League, then, which is but it's in. Incon- well, I th- I I think the way we're going. It's, uh, yeah, funnily enough, Des and I were just saying before we came on. We, it sounds the way we're going. United don't even need to play any more games. Everybody else is um. They're imploding. Less, less, yeah. They're just thrown his way today, aren't they? Yeah, yeah like Chelsea I mean, lost three <clears> 0 <throat> yesterday to Sheffield United, was it? Yeah, if if we can manage to, um, we've got our next three games are um, Saint Southampton, then Palace, then West Ham. If we can, um, it might not even go to less to the final game of the season against Leicester. We could have it. Uh, we could have it done there. But then again, we looked a bit ropey against Bournemouth. Um, uh, not that long ago with them scoring first, but then we just seem to have the firepower at the moment yeah. to be able to put goals in the back of the net. Um, they've uh, just, they've been know. coming good at the right time. I see Danny Strange is out there. Back to poker, lads. No need for football talk today after watching the North London Derby. Danny, of course, a gunner. And uh, Danny, oh. you know, we're looking forward to seeing your boys play at Anfield on Wednesday night. Yeah. Liverpool That'll be have, have traditionally... Man, have, yeah, that was yeah. awesome, isn't it? We've always done well against uh, Arsenal, or at least in recent years, we've always done well against Arsenal at uh, at Anfield. Who knows what will happen on Wednesday evening? No idea. Hopefully, hopefully David Luiz plays because he, he'll he'll surely uh, put he's always a net or something. Won't he? Yeah, we do like we Just do like David Luiz. Played. Yeah, David Luiz, go for a goal, but you just never know which net it's going to go into. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sideshow Barbe. Uh, so what what did you make of uh, City's Champions League draw? That was a that seems to have been a blooming tough draw. Who did they get? Well, they they've obviously got to do the second leg against Madrid, and they're looking good there. But you wouldn't rule. Oh, oh. Hello, what's happened Pe- here? Peter Munro gets there on the river. Jack oh, nine wow. against pocket oh. sevens, and he wow. spikes a nine on the river to be a, to to end the way that his final table has gone. Oh, so uh, go. that's the roller completed. Peter Munro, eight hundred forty-seven dollars for first place. Oh, Very right. well played to him. Lewis Tabeeb, who was uh, uh, the, uh, Steve's nemesis in the squads game tonight. Well, he finishes in second place in the roller for five hundred sixty-eight dollars, and Adam Bromley finished third for three sixty-three. Well done to all of you guys. Nice. Let me. We get will a... focus on the squad on the squads. So yeah, so it was. So they've got to be. Yeah, they've got to beat. Um, uh, obviously, Real Madrid in the second leg of um, of the quarter. Of the, sorry, the last sixteen. Then they pick up Juventus, uh, mm-hmm. and then if yeah. they get through Juventus, then it's likely to be Barcelona, um, and then PSG or Atletico uh, maybe. PSG or or, or, Leipzig, yeah, or Bayern. Bayern. Uh, so Bayern must uh, be in the other. Uh, yeah. It's 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 uh, it's Juventus or Bayern. Well, Bayern is in the same half as uh, City. So basically, all, all, so, so, all so it'd be Barcelona. Draws. Would it be so it'd be Barcelona or Bayern in this in the semi final? Correct, one. correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's absolutely right. So it's a it's I mean, a there's, tough, there's a few it's a tough draw. In, there's a few interesting things here because obviously Bayern have now got a month off before this Champions League starts. Yeah, um, and I'm assuming they're going to pretty much run Champions League as their preseason into a new season. Um, obviously, Liverpool have got a situation whereby. You're on your you're on your preseason summer break now, effectively. It, it, it um, feels a little bit that way, really. And you've not got any of Europe to worry about. Whereas City and and United, I mean Chelsea aren't because Chelsea are three 0 down against yeah. Bayern. They're playing. Yeah, yeah they've yeah. got one more game to play, but that's pretty much yeah. it. But yeah, it's going to be it's going to be some interesting dynamics going into the start of a new season. How it's going yeah. to work out. And we're talking about PSG possibly making the final in that Champions League, but obviously there's no French, French football going on. I don't know how they prepare. Yeah. For Champions League, because I mean, it, you've got it makes the likes no of, sense. Got, yeah, in the Europa League, you've got the likes of Rangers that have got to come back to play a game, and Scotland yeah, haven't same, been playing either. Same thing. Yeah, Scottish same League. Thing. It's it's um, I'm not. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's a, a great way. But I guess if you know, I think the Scottish fixtures have already been for the new league have already been released, haven't they? 
Have they? And they're start. They're, yeah, they're starting um, in August. So now yeah. that they've been I'm released, sure I saw. I'm sure I saw that the uh, the other day. So now that they've been released, do do the clubs now have to vote as to whether they like them or not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Release draft um, one. <laughs> <clears throat> Now got me questioning whether no, I'm pretty sure it's um Oh Danny is saying nineteen eighty nine. They're all after us tonight, boys. Nineteen eighty nine. Oh, it was May the twenty seventh. It was a Friday evening. Uh it breaks my bloody heart. Michael Thomas and his injury time winner for Arsenal against Liverpool. Oh. Do you remember that one, lads? Do you remember that one? Well I've read the boat. I was watching it on telly that uh, that night. Uh, and it was it was what, a week or two after we'd won the FA Cup against Everton. Uh, oh, it's just insane. It'd been four years since we lost a game by two goals at at, uh, at Anfield. Yeah, I was I was eight. Yeah, Scottish time, Scottish fixtures. Oh. Yeah, Scottish league starts on the first of August. Just because that's all you need to do. Just just not get beat soon. They just need to can't yeah. play for that. Yeah, it's, it's funny. In, um, it's it's in Jamie Callagher's book, isn't it? That he was outside. He was in a pub. He was a blue nose at the time. Sorry, apologies, blue nose. Um, he was he was an Evertonian at the time. What you mean a blue um, nose? Yeah, <laughs> bitter, bitter blue nose. Yeah, um, and, it, and it describes he, he, he describes it in his book because he ran out the pub. He was with his dad. Yeah, he was watching. It was a red thing, um, and he ran out the pub just, just jumping up and down. Couldn't believe that a mate no over the moon. Couldn't believe that Liverpool have thrown it away. And then you know years years down the line, he's, he's playing for us, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. Well, not yeah. just playing for you. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. he fairly. Well, Fairly um, supportive. Vice captain, wasn't <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. like, there was rumors yeah. If you didn't, if you didn't, if you didn't know, if you didn't know that he used to support Everton as a as a youngster, um, the way he yeah. talks about them, you'd have thought, yeah, there's he's absolutely Liverpool through and through. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah no, he was, but yeah, it was a um, boy called the blue. What's he say? Bizarre. Brenda Byrne is asking, were you a Liverpool fan then, Des? So uh, I, I saw Liverpool. I actually went to see Liverpool for the first time in 1980. So I was probably a fan from 75, 76. Uh, went to see them in 1980, the great team of Clements and Dog Leash and you name it. And uh, yeah, so in 89, I, I mean, I was a teenager. It was, yeah, uh, like a dagger through the heart, that one. I think it was the last time Arsenal had beaten us, to be honest. <laughs> well, Arsenal don't beat any of the top six, do we? I tell you, it's, I, I did reasonably recently. I saw that uh, documentary or that film on Sky called 89, which was from the Arsenal perspective. Uh, you know, uh, you know, was written about. I, lo- that. I love that Sky, that, that new Sky documentaries channel. Yeah, it's good, brilliant. right? So oh, it's absolutely it's written about so, that. So, so good. Yeah. And it shouldn't, um, we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that Arsenal that year at one point were like 13, 14, maybe even, maybe even more points ahead of Liverpool in the league. They had that much of a lead and they self-destructed in the last two or three games. They, they had a draw at Highbury to Derby, who were in the bottom three, and they lost to Wimbledon at, at Plough Lane, which meant that they then had to go to Anfield and win by two. But in reality, you know, you'd have expected them to pick up points in both of those games. Um, so they sort of imploded a bit. But uh, it shouldn't be lost sight of how big that title win was for Arsenal because they had won cups and stuff, but they hadn't really won titles uh, for, for quite some time before that. I think it was 17 or 18 years before they'd won a title before that. So it was a huge, uh, huge thing for them. They had a great young team then as well. Uh, Thomas being one of the players, but Rocky, Rowcastle, um, Alan Smith, you know uh, Tony Adams. It was a it was a great young Arsenal team at that time. They weren't the best looking, though, were they? Oh, they were ugly. Sin, but... Paul Me- Paul Merson, <laughs> Paul Merson, yeah, Paul Merson on the wing. And you know it, it's it's oh, what, gutting because what a bloke, what a bloke. Johnny what Barnes. Man. Listen, a minute into injury time, John Barnes got the ball. And all he had to do was to run to the corner flag with it and we'd have won the league. But instead he did what Liverpool were coached to do at the time and he turned towards the penalty area, went for it, lost the ball, went straight to the goalie, boom. Uh, 20, 30 seconds later, it was in the net. Uh, detail. One of, my be- be- one of the best line. evenings ever was... <laughs> one of the best evenings ever I had uh, was spent um, doing a, a question of sp- corporate question of sport with John Barnes as my team oh. captain. Fantastic. Up in a restaurant up wow. in um, up in in uh, London, 
for the oh. night uh, got invited by a client and just an amazing evening I'll tell just you what. brilliant uh, John John Barnes done well because he's remained current. You know, I think he does a uh, you know reasonable job in the punditry and stuff. But um, he was some player. And I was that, interested. Well, John, so he's John done Barnes. he's he's done a little bit of punditry um, since lockdown on the TV. But is that only because normally he does stuff at Anfield on match day? And so uh, I think he does some match day stuff. But he's more likely to be found on the pitch and doing stuff like that as opposed to necessarily in the studio doing some punditry uh, you know he's, he's it's not a big part it's not a big thing for him i think he does it reasonably well um and and maybe that'll change because you know sky in particular have their little troop of guys that they roll out time and time again well but i saw um, on this afternoon's barnes, game who's, who's, who's a, yeah, go on scouts yeah john barnes who's um he does a lot for the army and he goes out visiting the troops in iraq and afghanistan uh, fair that, play. that never meets the media and he goes out and, and does quite a few tips just to, to go and see them as like a morale thing which which never gets spoken about Yeah, and he's a really nice bro he's really good at it yeah he speaks very I remember when um, <clears throat> so when we did this crash of sport thing I think he'd he just finished maybe as the Celtic manager I want to say yeah didn't he do his, didn't he do a short stint there and, but he's very vocal about about black managers in the game and how and black coaches how difficult it was to get you know to to get jobs and you know and he's quite openly talking about it and just said it's you know it's just incredible and i mean that was a good you know probably 10 15 years ago something like that and sad to you know it's still not much better so on sky tonight uh, this evening they had um Saul Campbell on uh, chatting about the game and uh, brilliant you know, so knowledgeable yeah. about the game, and yeah. uh, it's you know really, and actually, it's quite nice to see see some new faces um, coming in to well, talk on some of the punditry because it's been it's, it's been the same old. I wish we could get rid of Graham Sooness, but I don't think that's ever yeah, going to happen. I'd, I'd, uh, I'd, yeah, I listen. I'd agree with you. I'd agree with you. I I could do with Sooness going, um, and a bit of change would not be uh, would not be a bad thing at all. I like Carragher and I like Carragher and Neville. So. Yeah, I love Carragher and Neville together when they're they're bantering. You know, it, it's actually. Yeah, you know, it's quite entertaining to watch and listen to it. Yeah, yeah no one wants to grow up to be a right back, do they? I used to be a right back. <laughs> <laughs> that was the quote, wasn't it? Yeah. No Never. one wants to grow up to be a, a Phil Neville, Gary Neville. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, maybe Gary Neville, but definitely not Phil. Come on. No, Phil was. Do you remember Phil did his first uh, punditry? You, you probably won't remember this, but he. It was at the World Cup. Would it have been? I'm going to say it was like only 2018. Wasn't long ago. Oh yeah, no, it was. It was very recent. Yeah, oh, it was yeah, brutal. Yeah. It was absolutely brutal. It I was, think it was it England was against horrible. the US. It was the worst, most wooden piece of punditry that I'd ever heard. And to be honest, you know, it was on like I think it was on the BBC or something. So it was a big, big game, and you can imagine how nervous the guy was going into that scenario. Um, but uh, he, he was terrible. So he's made a better fist of it since, of course. But uh, he's quite lucky to get another chance. I have to say, after that first uh, disastrous episode. Well, yeah, the worst no, pundit's got to be Michael Owen. Uh, He's got the personality of a, of a tree. It's yeah, a magnificent really magnificent player, but very light in his uh, opinions, I have to say. Well, even, as, even as a player, as soon as you hit like 23, 24, it's just all downhill. He had a, he had a bad injury, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he did. Yeah. And his, his, pace, his pace was, was paramount for him and his finishing, and he lost a few yards, didn't he, after yeah. his injury? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it oh, them, Tom! And... Tom Banks has just reminded me of one of the best football headlines ever. That obviously follows John Barnes whilst he was at Celtic. The um, Invercali Go Ballistic Celtic are atrocious. Yeah, what a great <laughs> football headline! <laughs> I was just trying to read it. I couldn't. I couldn't make it. I was just trying to work it out what it said. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I it like that. It makes sense. Yeah, Invercali Go Ballistic Celtic are atrocious. That is one of the greatest <laughs> headlines of all time. Oh, uh, love it. Dear. It's like what's that? What's what's the Scottish scoreline that ever? There was it. Uh, was it four, four, five, five, four, five, four, four, five? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, we talked about it for years, and they ended up in a penalty shootout a few years back, and it was damn close to being exactly that. Oh, love it! Absolutely love it. I've, I played in um, an old firm as well. It's not quite on the level of Celtic Rangers in Scotland, but it was in, a, in Northern Ireland for local teams. Oh, holy Christ! Yeah. <laughs> And you can imagine the uh, the side the, the touch lines going off. It was Scarborough Rangers against teams like Armagh Celtic. You know, it was Jesus. Um, yeah, <laughs> it was it was good fun. Uh, but it, there was nothing too. It wasn't it wasn't 
as you'd imagine, over the top aggressive. It was, uh, I think both sides respected themselves, you know, um, and it didn't go mad. But yeah, to say well, the, it uh, in, like an old firm is, is but Falls, like an, Falls Road, uh, Celtic against what? Sh- what was the other place? Shanklin. Shanklin uh, well, Celtic. Uh, Scarborough, Scarborough <laughs> Rangers. It was. Oh, I'd stay well away from that one. I have to say. Yeah. Yeah, I just popped in for a, fun, a look. <laughs> Were you playing, Andy? Yes, yes. So uh, this, I was in the army at the time, but um, and it, on on a Saturday, I used to go out and play for a local team. No, happy. I, 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 um, the pub, I didn't tell the army about it, obviously, but no, probably did, shouldn't have done it. Did did uh, <laughs> did your pub know you were uh, army? I assume they did, but like, it was that not a bit? Was that not a bit fruity back in Northern Ireland? I mean, you, in saying that, you're not that old. So how far back are we looking? Um, and I'll give you a sense of how fruity it was. So it's probably 15 years ago, if not a bit longer. 2005? Um, 2004 oh, in that sort of area? Yeah, yeah, I think I left 2008, so... About 2002, I was over there with you, I think. And then I, I left 2008, 2007, so I only did three, so yeah, 2004 onwards it would have been. Well, yeah. Go back, go well, back, yeah. Go back 10 to 15 years prior to that again, and I think you'd been a bit different. Stay, yeah. stay away from the uh, the local yeah, football well, games. Well, one of the games we, it was a cup. It was a cup game, so we we went away from um, our local area, um, and it was it was South Armour, which is a oh, big yeah. red red zone for Crikey. any sort of uh, red, white, and blue people. I mean, I wasn't I wasn't biased into any side at all. I, you know, I was just doing my job, enjoying my football. Yeah. But but when we went down there, it was the, the team was actually named after someone who had who had died on. So from the, uh, the the Irish side, uh, oh God, yes, yeah. <laughs> but the sidelines were were heavy and and but there was no animosity. Or anything. It was it was obviously a tense game, but um, nothing nothing happened. It was great, and that was an eye opening for me to see that you know even despite the the troubles that you can have a game of football without any yeah anything escalating. You know, of course, well. bizarrely, you know, given the situation in Ireland over many years, um, you know, the fact that uh, they've got one rugby team. And that you know the uh, the Gaelic is is played across all thirty two counties, like it just shows that sport can be a, a you know a, a great balancer. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a, a great way to to put it. You know, to, and it's a way for them to prevent any sort of aggression, like yeah. legally as well, if you like, <laughs> um, getting heavy tackles or whatever. It's part of the game, isn't it? Um, and it's I think so. As long as it doesn't escalate, as I say, and turn into something a bit yeah. more. Well, if Danny's if Danny's still on there, obviously heavy tackles. We should explain to him what that is, because it's it's clearly not part of the Arsenal game. <laughs> yeah, they're a bit soft, aren't they? <laughs> well, you see, they'll come to Anfield now on bloody Wednesday oh, night and stuff us oh, again. They're a sleeping giant, aren't they, Arsenal? They're they're a yeah. big club, like. You've got a couple of interesting games. You've got Arsenal at home, and then you've got Chelsea as well, haven't you? Yeah, I saw the uh, the program cover for the Chelsea game. It's just the Premier League trophy. And underneath champions, 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 it's going to be a, a program worth getting. Chelsea sure aren't going to. Gonna, I mean, it. Chelsea, Chelsea aren't going to turn you over on the night. Well, they have to, don't the trophy, they? Are they? They absolutely well, they need have to. to. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look, we know, we know now that it's not enough to say uh, oh, we need this number of points to get a points record or whatever it is. You have to come and play your best and score your goals. If you don't do that, any team in the Premier League will turn you over, as Watford have done to us. You know, Burnley effectively turned us over the last day. So, um, yeah, you, you just can't not be there at 100%. So, uh, it, it, the game is going to mean more to Chelsea than it will to us. Um, mentally, if uh, if for no other reason. I, yeah, and I, th- I think uh, Frank, Frank Lampard's going to definitely reiterate that in the dressing room, isn't he, before we come out? Um, well, they're likely to be in fifth position in the league by the time they line up for that game. Yeah, it's a massive game. Like, I mean, that's huge, wanna, right? Wanna, yeah. He's got bloody uh, Timo do we, do Werner we need, do we? And, and others coming in, and uh, if they have no Champions League, it'll be a disaster for Chelsea. Yeah. Uh, when did they sign in, Timo Werner? I was, I, was a bit, I was a bit shocked by that. Yeah. Um, well, money money talked there, uh, you know, fortunately for Chelsea. I, I wasn't sure if it was geographical, like he wants to go more London. No, I just don't think he had... I mean, Liverpool pulled out effectively, or we couldn't afford to pay the 50-odd million. And um, you know Chelsea surely was next you can, surely you can afford surely you could flick in fifty mil well, easily. 
Well, it would oh, appear yeah. that we didn't do it. So there's talk of uh, Thiago uh, Alcanatra, the uh, the Barcelona player. Uh, or, uh, oh, the player he's been on loan. Player, been on loan at Bayern Munich. He, yeah. Was he on? Or Bayern, he was on loan somewhere, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So there's there's talk about him coming in, but you know who knows what their plans are. So you'd assume that they could flick in fifty or a hundred million if they needed to. But um, where would you want to strengthen? Where would you guys want to strengthen? Um, well, S- Sane is going free, isn't he, at the end of the season? I mean, I think, I think that's a no-brainer. What a player! Yeah, I don't think we we'd be able to get him. I think he. I have a feeling he's going. He's going to, free. Going back to Germany or something. Uh, right. Yeah. Who's this? Uh, sorry, Sane, City. Oh, sorry. No, he's uh, Bayern have signed him. Yeah, that's right. That's, oh, that's what I. Uh, right. That's what I thought. No, it's, it's 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 for a free. It was for a fee as well. It was um about thirty or forty mil, something like that. I think forty million. Just to get in ahead of the, I think uh, the, that's the only player Liverpool's going to get him for is that Sorare for Wolves. He's oh, God. Coming to us in, in the summer, which I think would be a cracking signing. He's not a squad player, though, isn't he? Yeah. Like, he seems like a team away, and he, he, wouldn't, he, wouldn't have, he wouldn't have started every game, I don't think. He can't probably. But you're going you're gonna to need to sign some players because Lalana's going to go, isn't he? Yeah, I think. Uh, I think um, and I'm assuming um, um, Shakiri's going to go as well. So they're they're the, they're a couple. I know, I know you've got some youngsters coming through. Um, but I mean, obviously, one of yours has always said you'll never win anything with youngsters. Um, so it's a <laughs> case well, of he know, was well proved wrong, though, wasn't he? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, completely. Um, but I guess you can fill the squad with some of those. But ultimately, you're you're then quite heavily reliant on that first eleven of yours, or yeah. certainly the the front line staying fit for the you know for the season. Um, and we I always don't... know it's harder it's harder to try and defend a title. I'd, um, I'd, I'd expect us to make a couple of signings. I, I think we're desperate yeah. for a fourth quality, you know, forward. And, and um, Mbappe's got to be on the list, hasn't he? Number one for me. Ooh, you know, Mbappe, yeah, you, you big might, money. Um, you might need I, to I, see I Salah he, going out to see Mbappe coming in, though. I don't know. I think we could use him as a front four. I think Bobby could sit as a number ten, and that we need like um, a, a rapid forward in front of him. Wow. Um, maybe reduce the midfield to like a, a bank of two in front of the back four with say Henderson and Fabinho there. I, th- I think that would be a great squad. Uh, well, a great first eleven. Wow. Um, I think they'll just if they get Mbappe, they'll probably they'll probably just rotate them. I can't see them doing that, but it, it could work. But I think it'd just be rotating. What will he cost, guys? In the in the current climate, what would he oh, cost? God, yeah, it's going to be one hundred and fifty plus, isn't it? But it's, if, it's but the fact is, if if they were going to sell, if they, yeah, but if they'd sell for one hundred and fifty, you'd you'd say spend the money, yeah, yeah, because you'll you'll yeah. make a lot of it back in shirt sales. Remember, there's a new Nike shirt deal uh, that's been signed that will come into play from the new season, and there's a very big percentage of that deal is coming through actual shirt sales. So the more shirts you sell, I know this sounds obvious, but actually it's very beneficial to sell a lot of shirts. Um, yes, and if you get an Mbappe, sense, it? everybody's going to buy an Mbappe shirt. Yeah. But who knows? I mean, who knows? He's sponsored by Nike as well, isn't he? Exactly, yeah. yes. I mean, it ties yeah. in. You've yeah. got like, like, like uh, the Sancho kid from, um, who's he play for now? Dortmund. Dortmund. That he's young lad. That, as well, isn't he? It's potential, like, and there was, there was rumors about that as well. So he could, if Salah did want to go to Madrid, you can blame him, you know. Well, no, you can't blame him. Why would you want to go to Madrid? It's, they're not as well. Well, that's what, but, yeah, but if you're not English or whatever, the, you know, people well, look no, at those two Galacticos, aren't they? It's, it, that's what. I tell you what still, there's still a draw, there, isn't there? There is still a draw to those two clubs. Definitely. Yeah, of course. That, is, yeah. that tends to only be Brazilians and South Americans. If you look at Africans, because Salah's from Egypt, it, it, it's more of a draw to Liverpool. Well, it might be different then, but I'm just saying that, they, you know, uh, yeah. I'm sure he'll have his ear, ear twisted by the money. So. Tell you, Lee, they could be signing Mbappe, it could be Havertz, it could be Sancho, it could be any number of. If if only there was a a, a Liverpool channel where where fans could discuss this type of stuff. <laughs> That's what we need, guys. That's what we need. Is anybody is in? Is getting... yeah. that not this show though? It, it's <laughs> it's beginning to feel a bit like that, isn't it? Yeah, I'm sure. Lee's a hijack yeah. LFC TV. You, you do a good job on that. You know? Oh, I tell you what, You've got it all set up already with this. If, if only you knew, my friend. If only you knew. We're already yeah. on that, aren't we, Lee? It's coming, is it? We're taking over the world. Oh, got it. In in thirty I, years' I'm... time, we should have we should be on top. Yeah, I I very much will be doing this from behind the scenes, obviously. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Shall I give a preview? Lee? We're Shall back I? on our perch. We're back on our perch, Lee. Shall I? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a preview up, Lee. So I'm not sure if I can do this, but let's let's have a look. We'll do this for he's a gonna try. He's going to see if he can do it. <laughs> okay, yeah. let's see if we can do this. So you, you guys might see this in 30 seconds on the old uh, uh, stream. <laughs> see that in a couple of seconds on the stream um uh god i don't know how many matches but i put that video together from beautiful matches that i've been at and uh yeah we're, we're trying to work out some sort of liverpool fan channel oh was that shrewsbury uh no chester you saw chester in there uh, was the it's the all one. pixelated for me sorry yeah about that. Well, it's, uh, it's quite a, quite a few games i'm sure uh i'm sure steve was at a couple of those chester games game, yeah. Uh, indeed, but more. Yeah, more to be fair, to if, if <coughs> to be fair, if Desert let me do that, if Desert let me do that video, it would have been a lot shorter. Uh, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Oh, if you're looking in the chat, I look forward to that. Ace yeah. is just gone. Isn't he? Is Ace gone? Twenty third. Yeah. Yeah, just lost Ace in twenty third. We've also lost Colin McCarthy as well in twenty fourth. Um, so what does it all mean, Lee? We got twenty one left, so, obviously. Yeah, what it means is um, is so JFS are locked up up top. They're now all done. Um, they're being chased by Andy still for Purple Ackies in third. And the Hetton Mob have still got Ryan and Gary in. So nothing's really changed from there. Um, Acer didn't actually improve on his, on his score um, for the week, unfortunately. Didn't quite uh, get far enough. But they're in a strong position here um yeah. at the, and ryan, at the ryan moment was smashing um, ryan and gary were on, on my last table actually they were, and ryan was doing well so i can't see as well unless something changes um yeah. we're going to be fighting for yeah. third really, MV, you know. mvp for the week uh don logan's up top um but he's got neville harrington uh that can catch him gary roberts can catch him ryan kilby can catch him i think uh oh no actually no ryan can't quite he's not gonna, quite gonna get even with a win so it's only uh, Gary and Neville that can catch uh, Don Logan at the top. Uh, Neville's on the table we're watching here, and uh, so is Gary actually. So um, uh, I can I will work out exactly what they need. Uh, Neville needs seventy five points. Gary needs one hundred and five. Um, so Gary needs a top two finish. And Neville needs a top five finish to overtake Don Logan at okay. the MVP. We'll watch how that and, one uh, unwinds. Yeah, and we'll see Good how luck, that um, that plays out to them. And obviously the others are in the hunt for the... Um, Kerry did ask uh, what they needed to do. Uh, let's have a look and see where Kerry's... Uh, they're all done now in fourth place, so they're not going to be able to improve on that, unfortunately, with Colin's exit. He did add to his uh, score for the for the week. But not enough. Uh, Celtic Storm with Brendan still in in with the mix, so uh, he can improve on his his score certainly uh, with a deep run. Uh, so he could uh, get into the top three. Um, and I don't think Tim Magnus is playing tonight for Eat My Stack, so uh, they're not going to improve on theirs. So we'll see how it well, uh, plays. But I'm on me back. Ten, ten big blinds have gone shipped in. So there we go. There we go. Oh, yeah. running sweet screen. Lovely. Ouch. Oh, yeah. Oh, hang on. Spade, get in. Boom. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what oh, happened? No, 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 yeah, I got the... Um, oh, he's the straight over straight. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I misread it there, yeah, yeah. He, he, he flopped it. Unlucky, Andy. We just put nah, your hand up. We saw the end of it. Ouch. Yeah, it looked tasty on the flop. But, uh, but yeah. No, he had the Good dance night. covered. So, yeah, 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 he fought out there. Off the outer. And then he got lucky on the end. So it was... 
Was it River Don, sir? E River, Jen. Standard. I can't see the history though, because but uh, it looked like you you turn a straight and then because he had a screen he had a bigger straight on the on the end. You both had the diamonds. No, he, you know, he got he had his he, he hit Broadway on the turn. Oh, did he? Yeah, he had broad he hit Broadway on the turn, so it was um. There's three diamonds and you both had diamonds, but he had the ace. Yeah, I know God does him. I say I was fighting that for a long time. Difficult when it's from a team point of view, isn't it? Is you're wanting to try and go deep and you're just kind of hanging on and you're very much uh, ducking and diving, aren't you, with it? Oh, yeah. I was constantly between 8 and 15 big blinds for, you know, for the past hour or 90 minutes or so. It's tough, isn't it? That's a challenge. Uh, so does this mean that you've all got to go around now tomorrow evening to Aki's and just explain yourselves? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're you don't to... want to go and speak to Aki. That's a, listen, this is what I heard. I heard you've got to go around to Aki's and give him one. An explanation. I think, uh, I don't think you could give him one. I think he <laughs> might give you one. <laughs> well, I think we better quickly move so, on uh, over this, Lee. Gaz, Gaz is just yeah. Gaz is just explaining he didn't uh, he didn't river him. Uh, they both had straight on the turn. Um, Steve, Steve Bailiff, come on, lad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Gareth, Gareth, Can't Gareth, believe you're getting a, you're getting uh, abuse from Gaz. I mean, really. He's already private messaged me. Cause just ask him how he's doing in the uh, BCPC Premier League as well. <laughs> oh, right, <system>. Really? <laughs> yeah. I know I'm not a BCPC player, but I play this for, for shits and giggles. You've been playing it for a while. You've played it for a while, though, haven't you, to be fair? Yeah, the, the, the Premier League. I, I played one season of BCPC when I was stationed in Oxford. I used to drive up and, uh, and I did it for one of the seasons. But I played the Premier League one and I've won it three times, which is boss because I'm not a BCPC player and no one else has won it more than once and I'm, I think I'm top at the minute as well it's it's only early days isn't it but um, it, it's a good crack especially giving Tony Trippier loads of grief with his badly played hands he loves it because oh, we, they're, they're, they're a good WhatsApp group that's... but they're a good oh, bunch aren't they so uh, oh, you, the yeah, you... I love the BCPC they're brilliant they're such a good bunch of lads yeah. And the band is great. And I, I'm, if I lived in Birmingham, I'd love to play their home game because it's it, it's it's so good because they have added seats for first, second. I think it's down to 10th. Um, and obviously 50% of whatever you win goes to the club and then that gets split up between the players and 50% you take of whatever you win so it's a good little community yeah, yeah. Brian, Brian runs a good show doesn't he, he does. um, yeah it, it's kind of, I heard it, the Talbot shut though hasn't it yeah they've got a few offers for other places um, and, and they do the deep stack as well which is like once a year and so people that aren't BCPC players that, that, that can't play every week or every no once a month they do it in the pub so you can go down and just play the one off and they had little they had little team games as well which I put a team in one time, and, and my team is the White Country Poker Club. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <don't think> <laughs> did we did, did a t-shirt for that one as well, did they? Yeah, we had t-shirts for that, the White, the white Country. I, I think remember, we nearly yeah. got beat up in the pub, though, because they thought they were being racist. <laughs> oh, you would do now, wouldn't you? But, yeah, it, it's it's brilliant what they do there. And I, I've, I've tried to start one off here, but you just can't get it going. We were trying to get Jay to do one years ago, and it, it just didn't happen. But yeah, what they do there is fantastic. Uh, it is very, very good. But you've got you've got to have committed um, committed members as well, haven't you? Oh, it's it's yeah. Just it's lo local crucial. for us, there isn't that many. Obviously down there, there are um, a good bunch. Yeah, a good bunch who do. Yeah, well, there's quite a few because they're all around that area. They, they get I think 20, 30 players every time for it. And they've so had them good. like and for it's, years. It's a, it's a good crack, obviously. You have silly, silly cash games if you get busted out with these Stomaha games and all that type of wow. stuff. And so when you get busted out, you carry on drinking and yeah, and play these mad cash games, which is all, all, all fun and games. Well, listen, guys, Gary Roberts has just hit a flush on the river to uh, survive, and he's all but taken John Stocker out. John's left with 17k. Gary is up to 250k. The average 726. So Gary's got a lot of work to do, but. Uh, Still in, and I think Gary is now the only one that can catch Don Logan because we've lost Neville Harrington, who was second. Um, so just looking at Neville's score, yeah, he's not added enough Go, Gary. tonight. 
So Gary is it. Um, needs a top two here. finish. 10 8. Ryan hits the, uh, Ryan hits the, the flesh. Yeah. Of course, and what you've now got is Ryan and Gary here are the two Hetton guys that are chasing down uh, JFS at the top. Who who's there is he playing for then, Lee? Uh they are oh, they they dropped him last week. What? Um Erzy's oh, been... yeah. What? Oh it was these the Hetton guys, I mean honestly, they don't they don't mess about. Oh, it's like the night's watch, isn't it? Just yeah. oh, you're gone, just, you're out of there. Honestly. Oh, they sent him north. They sent him north of the wall, and he's not been seen for the last week. Wow! Um, wow! Shocking! Shocking behaviour to expel the warden of the northeast. Well, I'll tell you what. Looking at this now, with uh, where Gary and and Ryan certainly Ryan stack as well. I think I think the Hetton mob might do this. I really do. I'll do it for both of them. Yeah, they're both still in. They can both. Yeah, they it. they need. They need to they need to make up um a hundred and nineteen points. Um and they've got two of them still in. Uh Ryan's lowest score is twenty two for the week. Gary's is thirty. So uh, you know, they they both they could do this. It's on, as they say. Interesting. But they're going to need to both, yeah, certainly, well, I mean, if Ryan won it, I think that would be enough, um, actually. Uh, what was he? 177, so it'd be 150. Well, Gary Roberts is all in again. Yeah, it would be, yeah, yeah. To be honest, if yeah, Ryan wins this, it'd be enough without ignoring what Gary does. Wow. Okay. So the team event is still up for grabs, is very much so. But JFS, JFS are in the clubhouse. With uh, 728 points and uh, 119 behind of the Hetton mob, but we've got Gary and Ryan still in. So, yeah, this is all up for grabs. That is for sure. Yeah, I think United's um, Europa League draw was uh, was actually okay, really. Um, I think we, av we avoid... Into Milan till the final, which I'm, um, I guess, are probably the biggest team in there. Just from a fact that I think there's so many ex United players over there now. Um, Just talk <laughs> us, uh, talk us through it, Lee. Who who did you get in the quarters? Oh, somebody, and then somebody else. On it, it was it, it's, the Europa League is yeah not great. Well, there's, there's always a semi really decent team or two in there. So, and it won't be easy to win it. I mean, I know you're playing well, but it'll still oh, be no, a, no, don't know. It'll still be yeah, a tough ask. Particularly yeah, when it goes completely. into a tournament setting, I think that'll be that's that's a complete un unknown really for this type of competition. I think it's going to make great viewing during August. May, you know, the Europa League. Yeah, I think I might be tempted to watch. United's I like games. I like the fact that it's all on. It's all going to be on. Um, you know, one one venue, and yeah. so it all, it'll all cool. be done in. Yeah, all be done in sort of two weeks. Two weeks is it, I think roughly. I think they're doing it all. They're, they're, they're all happen they're both happening at the same time, aren't they? I well. think. Yeah. Well, I mean, the league will be over in a week and a half to two weeks' time, so I guess then it'll be Europe for what two weeks? Are they doing the Champions League and the Europa League I, consecutively? Or yeah, I uh, think we play. I think we play our our second leg, last sixteen game or whatever, um, on the fifth or sixth of August. Well, that's a waste of time straight away. You what about five nil up? We're five nil up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, it's crazy. But I've got to, but, but I've got to play anyway. it. Yeah, got to play but it. You've got, no, but you've got to play it. You know, yeah. It's, uh, it's Gary's Gary's all in here and gets it through. So we play, yeah. So we've got the round of sixteen second leg on Wednesday, the fifth of August, and then then it all then starts after that. And our last Premier, obviously last Premier League fixture is the twenty sixth. So, so who, you've got about ten days. Oh, that's perfect. Uh, so who who have you got? If you remember, don't don't obviously go searching it out. But I mean, do you even I'm have the, the, the chance the of a it. tricky semi final or? Um, Can you just comment no, on what a great battle he is? He's not a clue who his team's playing, and the only chance they've got of a trophy this year. <laughs> well, we've got semi final of the FA Cup as well. We've got Chelsea in that. Um, so uh, you could, you're, win, you're, you could you're, win two cups. You, you, it's true. You guys aren't. Yeah, you guys aren't in that one either. So don't worry about it. That's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, <so laughs> Oh dear! So, um, yeah, we had more important things. To that's play right. For. Christmas came early for Liverpool this year, Lee. We're uh, we're done. We're dusted. The no, so we've got um, anyway, 
So our yeah, so our our quarterfinal game would be uh, the winners of um, FC Copenhagen versus Istanbul uh, Bazaktas. Bazaktas. Uh, Bishaktas oh, and they're it's done, they're one nil okay. they're one nil up now, they're always, one nil up at the moment so you'd always be tempted to say a good pundit would say oh a trip to Istanbul is oh it's going to be tough that's long it's going to be but it's not though is it it's going to be like in Portugal or somewhere where where's yeah. this tournament then, but, being played I, 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 um, Germany oh nice okay uh, once they get some through European, the the uh, gum some, some European pedigree team still left in there isn't it. Yeah, well, this is what we're going to find um, out. Do you play any? I mean, well, there's so so you've got no. So we don't. So we potentially could play Wolves in the semi final. Okay. Um, and then Inter Milan potentially in the final. I mean, other teams that are in there, Sevilla. Uh, yeah, Sevilla are playing Roma. Is a good team. But the, but but so Sevilla versus Roma in the round of sixteen. That Roma, hasn't had a. Roma is a good team. You know, they're, yeah, but they're that, so teams. that game. Yeah, so that game and the Inter Milan Getafe game are both being played as single leg. Uh, games in Germany um, yeah. to get those finished. Anything that's already had the first leg play, the second leg is being played as it should, where where it should be. Yeah, and then everyone else then plays in Germany. But um, yeah, I mean Frankfurt are still in, but they're three 0 down to Basel. Um, no, don't like either. Yeah, of them. W- uh, w- Wolves potentially. Uh, yeah, so you wouldn't, the, you, de- you definitely wouldn't fancy Wolves because um, you know there are there are. They're a decent and Lever- uh, and Bayern Leverkusen, the, okay. who were three one up on Rangers, so they were, they were in the Champions League, so they obviously dropped down. Um, that'll be interesting to see. Interesting to see. A Leverkusen, the ones that as well are, are in form, so it could be an all in. Could yeah. be an all are there a, a Leverkusen the a Leverkusen the ones that have got Kai Havertz? I think they are. Or is he? Yeah. So and he's supposed to be on the move, isn't he? So. Um, and there's going to be some interesting transfers because there's there's some rumours that there's some players that are up for or looking to be transferred that might well the transfer goes through and they won't be allowed to play the European games. Well, no, if the transfer goes through, you or, know. or you know the transfer's been agreed, and what I'm saying is that the deal is yeah. that that yeah they won't get to play in the. Um, yeah, that's fair enough. And I think I think um, I think Timo Werner was one of those, but whether that what they're still in, I'm not sure. Well, yeah, yeah, Leipzig, isn't it? Yeah, Chelsea, Chelsea aren't Leipzig going to be in the Champions for? League for long. Because Leipzig is still in, aren't they? Yeah. Leipzig, I think, are playing Atletico Madrid in the quarterfinals. That, that, that yeah, would be that a good should match. Have been us, shouldn't it? Should have no, been us. Man. Should have been us. Yeah. Well, I think it's a bit wrong, though, if they is. Because it's still this season. If it's a close season transfer, they should still be able to play for them. Yeah, I think well, I think what Lee is saying, the way I assume this is, it'll be a negotiation. They'll say, well, okay, if yeah, you yeah, want yeah. to sign up, it'll but be, yeah, play, yeah, we don't, we don't, yeah. Us. Yeah, we don't want. Well, no, it's not just don't play against us. It'll be that they don't want them to play in that August, that August games. Um, it'll yeah. be if we're doing the deal. It's yeah, basically that's it. Um, and I'm pretty sure Timo Werner was one of the players that they were talking about where the deal's been done, and basically it's a yes, you can finish your, your German league, but ultimately, yeah, you won't be able to play in the in the latter stages of the Champions yeah. League. So it'll be for that, for the that's UCF. a bit harsh. That, that, that's really harsh, especially for the player as well as the club. Because you want to win a Champions League medal, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Well, if he's willing to do the deal with that as a clause in it, you know, if he signed the deal, got to stick to it. Yeah, it's just a weird situation, isn't it? Because technically, if the COVID didn't happen, they, they would have been playing the Champions League. Yep. So it's 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 a bit of a tough one. Well, if COVID, we we'd be what in the middle of the Euros. Or, or coming to the conclusion yeah. of the Euros by yeah, now, actually, wouldn't I it? think it'd be close to yeah. finishing now. Yeah. It's going to be interesting, yeah. actually, because... Yeah, tickets, yeah, the, tickets for the semis in the final as well for that. So I don't know what... Are they, so what, what are they doing with those, Steve? Are they um are they just honouring them for next year, or, or what have they said? I'm not sure. It was actually, it was actually Gareth that, that come through the ballot. Um, so I haven't asked him what's happening. I've assumed they'll just transfer into next year. Yeah, I actually um, think England will be even stronger in twelve months' time, and I and I thought actually we're in with a shout. I think I genuinely thought we're in with a shout this summer, but actually I think another year on with some of the players that are on the fringes. Um, I mean, England could be an absolutely frightening prospect in another twelve months' time. Oh, we've got a ridiculous league crop of uh, young players you mentioned before. Which, there's Phil Foden as well that's coming through. There's yeah, England, it, the, the future's bright for England, but there's been a lot of false dawns. Yeah, so. as you say, yeah, it's you just don't you don't quite know where it's uh, where it's going to go. 
it's, uh... Well, even in the international, the, the, it's a knockout tournament. Anyone can win. You look at um, was it Turkey in the Euros that didn't Greece. qualify, and then and I oh, was was it Greece, but oh, they that didn't was qualify. way back ninety six Denmark. Was it? Yeah, if you're going back that far, 88, Denmark, uh, 88, 88 was, no, was it Denmark in 88 or 92? Was it Denmark? Uh, it was, uh, Denmark won the one in England, didn't they? 96. Who, who was the team that got backdoored into it? That didn't Denmark. qualify, but the, the Czech Republic. Yeah, Denmark. I'm pretty that sure was Denmark. that was Denmark in 96 and in that, England. No, 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 it wasn't in 96. Was it, it was 96? in 92. It was, 90, it was 92. Was it 92? Yeah, it was 90, that, It was 92. Was so 88. Wilder brothers. Yeah, yeah. Eighty eight was eighty eight was the Dutch, wasn't it? Yeah. They were lucky. And then and then ninety two was Denmark. I'm pretty sure it was ninety two. What about Big Jack? Uh you mentioned eighty eight. Uh, obviously Big Jack took Ireland to the Euros in eighty eight in Germany. Uh very unlucky not to make it all the way to the semis. Um but uh, Big Jack lost his battle yesterday. Uh, sad to see him go. Of course an England legend winning the World Cup in sixty six. No, it's bad. Yeah, I, I saw. Didn't, I hadn't heard that. Yeah. yeah, very sad. I saw. I saw the, the papers this morning were talking about. You know, well, you know, he should have been. He should be knighted now, and uh, how he's. I don't know how. How was that whole team wasn't just. Oh, knighted. Um, wow. As uh, as he gets a bit of as, luck there. As he gets a bit of luck, yeah, yeah. I don't quite know how that whole team. When he's the only thing we've got a we have a Sir Andy Murray now who's still playing sport oh, that you know that no he's, he's good at how on earth that 1966 winning team the only only english you know team to have done it haven't didn't all get knighted and uh, did, uh and bobby recognized moore got is, is amazing knighted. bobby moore got knighted on the back of it as did jeff hurst why, why nobody else really weird isn't it and, and alf ramsey did as well didn't he i think how strange yeah it's really when you see some of the you know some uh some of the um, knighthoods that then get you know get given and say when they're still I mean to me I think if you're still in, if you're still actually um, competing in your sport certainly from a sport point of view I always find it a little bit strange that you're, you're handing these things out left right it's like you can win a if you win an Olympic gold medal now for Great Britain it's pretty much guaranteed you're going to pick up a you know a, a gong somewhere along the lines it does seem a little bit um, wrong apparently Des is That's on the, the uh, New Year's on his list next That's year That's right I certainly hope so I certainly hope so <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. you know the the, the December honours are generally the World Club Cup so we took that one last uh, December in the New Year's <laughs> I know uh, Lando Norris got a, a podium at the uh, Austrian Grand Prix last weekend Sir Lando arise <laughs> came <laughs> yeah, third it's just, <laughs> oh, it's just crazy isn't it yeah I, I mean I just when you I don't know it's it's understanding what an achievement it is you know I suppose is Andy Murray winning the first you know men's Wimbledon title by a Brit for however long does that you know is that any any greater than Lewis Hamilton winning what's it now five yeah, world is championships six, yeah. six, I think. six or coming up yeah six I mean I don't know what it's very difficult from sport to sport does how does that compare to say for example the cyclists you know winning Tour de France's um, yeah. You know what three in the last four or what five or whatever like you know I, I, it's difficult from sport to sport isn't it here we go and here's he's going to double again we'll have that it's quite interesting here they've got three of the hatton guys on this table two in the team one yeah. one uh on the touch line yeah <laughs> so so interesting one for you guys. I was, I was I was thinking today. So as three Liverpool fans, so tell me this. Obviously, Klopp has been in the uh, Liverpool now for what four years? Is it fourth fourth season? Uh, twenty fifteen, October ninth, twenty fifteen. So coming around for five years. Then, did you feel from day one that he was something different and he had something special about him, or is there an element of it? it it was a little bit of trial and error to start with. And obviously what he stumbled across in the last couple of years is, you know, it's been a different level for the Premier League. But was it something when you when he first came in, you just thought, yeah, okay, this guy, yeah, we'll give him the time because he's going to do this. There's something about him. Oh, it was his character, his character right from the word go. And the way he, count, he, the way he was with the supporters and, and the feel for the club and... You saw a lot of Dortmund as well, didn't you? What yeah. he was like prior. 
Well, you seen like Dortmund and, and Liverpool. You seen it in one of the European games a year or two ago. Uh, they both sing "You Never Walk Alone," which is a bit spooky. It, it's both there, to, there, and so I was at that game in Europe, and all the Dortmund fans were singing it, and the Liverpool, and it was. Yeah. I think it got an award as well for for the the best fans at a game. And it was exactly the same at Mainz as well. So if you saw the uh, responses that he got, both leaving Mainz and Dortmund, uh, it, it was just like, you know, the love for him, for the fans in leaving both of those clubs were exactly what he'd get if he left Liverpool tomorrow. And then I suppose if you look at 2016, so he's in the job a few months, he gets us to uh, Europa League final. Uh, we're leading at half time. We end up losing to Seville. 2017, 2018 was one of the best Liverpool teams in Europe. I mean, they just shipped goals for fun. Um, we had a final against Madrid, and then obviously... We, so, yeah, I, there wasn't ever a point that I wasn't very excited to have Klopp on board. And as the boys said, just personality. You know, it just connected very, very well with Liverpool fans. It does. What would you say... Oh, go on, Andy, yeah. Oh. Yeah, some of, the, some of the things as well. Like, he lives in Formby, and... Like my brother's seen him out and he just sits in the pub, has a drink, reads his paper and anyone that speaks to him, he'll sit there and he'll chat football all day long. Which I don't think you'd see many other managers doing that. Do you know what I mean? It's just speaking to Joe Public. And he just he just eats, breathes, lives football. And the character, you see him on his interviews and everything else and he's, he's just different class. And he's got lucky. Well, you say he's got lucky, but some of the signings he's made, you sign him and you think, oh, is he any... even Salah, like Salah was failed at Chelsea. And... Well, that, but that's what I mean, though. See, it's, it's, it's like, it, it feels, I don't know whether it's hit and miss or whether it just, it is just that actually it's just blended together nicely and that was always the plan. Did you always feel that he's had a plan? You play this kind of suffocating pressing game where the players at Liverpool now seem to, seem to run so much further than anybody else uh the energy levels are so much higher than anybody else this is what i mean when they've taken it to another uh, another level it's 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 I, I whenever i watch them it feels like it's suffocating the other side it's just constantly just got the foot down on them and, and just never never let off from the first minute to the 90 well whatever sometimes we're playing in the hundredth minute these days but um that's how it feels as a as a opposing fan watching it and you kind of just go well well why can't why don't all teams do this? So what what is it that he does that actually he, makes he, him do he, it? He completely hammers them in training, doesn't he? I think they are a bit more high risk to injury because of it. And they that, they did have a lot of very injuries. Very intense training, isn't it? Yeah, in 2015 it's and 2016, that, well. they had a lot of injuries. He's right through all the youth systems. All all the all Liverpool teams play the same that way. Style. Same way. And that's why you, you sort of think, which is a bit of a shame. If he sends players on loan, I think that's basically it, which is a bit of a shame because I'd like to see Harry Wilson come back. Yeah. Um, but I think once they go on loan, I think that's Klopp just going, oh, I don't fancy you. Um, so the players that we have got on loan, and we've got some good players on loan, I, I don't think they're ever coming back because he likes to keep them in the under-23s or, or whatever level it is. Because but Steve, is that, is that because they're not, he doesn't feel they've got, the intensity and is that what it boils down to? It's the ability to, you know, be constant at that level for the for ninety minutes. That's exactly. And he doesn't what see I that in them. That's exactly yeah. what I think it is. If he doesn't think they're going to do what he wants them to do, he'll put them on loan. They'll probably be brilliant on loan. Like Harry Wilson's been really good. Well, they're, they're, they're technically, technically, re- I mean, Harry Wilson technically a very, very gifted footballer. You know, and it, it's oh, it's yeah, it's it's clear, and he will. He will do very well in the Premier League, and he will ha- he will have a good career. I mean, there's no no denying it. Um, but you just don't think where where would he even fit into a Liverpool team at the moment? The Liverpool team now is just it's so interchangeable. The, the players we've got, even even the background, like you look at the the kids that are coming through, they played the a clock clock way, and the biggest the biggest show of it was the Everton game. Basically, played all the kids in the Everton game. The only senior player really was Lara. Lallana had probably one of the best games he, he's ever had in a Liverpool shirt. Because I think with the likes of Lallana, he needs to be the best player in the team to play well. If he's not, he goes missing a bit. But he has one of his best, well, probably his best game ever. But after that game, the, the kids and the players and Klopp was on the pitch. And 
some of the kids were going to go and walk down the tunnel. He was like, no, go and enjoy this. This is what it means being a Liverpool player. And he was sending them back out to go and clap the fans. And that's that's the personality of him. And if you've got that in a team, that's gonna that that just gives you such an advantage. Yeah. I think they trust him. You know, I think uh, for Klopp, they um, he he knows what he wants. He, I think he's very good at communicating to the players what he wants, and I think um, he d- he doesn't doubt himself. You know, he knows what the formula is, and I think they trust him on the back of that. Um, yeah, it's it's a marriage mer- met in heaven at the moment. Who knows what it'll be like in two or three years' time? But I I hope it uh, it doesn't change. I well, think it's, it's interesting. It's, it's of a, titles and a, and a champion. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, I was going to say, it, it feels like it's a similar... It, it's interesting. And the reason I was thinking about it is because I read an interview with with Mourinho who um, was suggesting that, you know, he'd win, t- he'd win things with Tottenham, but it wasn't going to happen instantly. And that, and then he, and he used the example of, well, look how long it took, took Klopp total uh, at Liverpool. And, and I thought <laughs> it was a most bizarre thing to say because I thought, well, but, but the Tottenham side that he's inherited now... Was probably is probably significantly better than the Liverpool side that Klopp yeah. will have inherited. Chalk yeah, and cheese. got to be. Yeah, chalk and yeah, cheese. Yeah, yeah. And it seems, and, and the, the strange thing is, is, and I think as, as somebody said on the Sunday supplement this morning, said, "Well, um, if Tot- Tottenham have bought, have got brought Mourinho in to win them trophies now, that's what Mourinho does. He comes in and wins trophies now. If he's saying, oh, well, I might be able to have something set up in four years' time. Well, what, what have they brought him in for?'" Yeah. doesn't make any sense, does it? Yeah. I think if you're a player and you look at Mourinho coming in, you sort of, you, you see what he did to the likes of Luke Shaw at United and to every other team that he's ever been with. He's sort of, he's left, you know, just under a massive cloud. It's very hard to trust, a you know, a manager like that if you're a player in the way that the Liverpool players, for example, trust Klopp. Luke, Luke Shaw, Luke Shaw is a perfect example because oh, right. you look at him now, He's a player full of confidence. Run, uh, you know, runs for ninety minutes. Uh, you know, no, no injury issues. Touch wood, you know. But all of a sudden, yeah, is just, and say getting forward all the time, and you know, defensively sound. And you'd have thought two, yeah, two years, two, three under Mourinho, he was absolutely, yeah. ne- you know, never going to play yeah, again. I, I, I just, remember when you signed him, Lee, and um, I was, I was worried. I was like, oh god, this this guy's going to be uh, something different. Um, but then I'd say under Mourinho, he was. Just couldn't couldn't flourish, could he at all? It was almost as if he was yeah. being, um, like not persecuted, but he was put down. Well, he wasn't was he, though, bit, wasn't I think, he? By Mourinho, and then, as you say, something he's gone and he's flying now. So it it it's proof in the pudding, really, isn't it? Really? Mourinho isn't. Um, he, he's great. He's great to watch. Um, in his in his conferences, isn't he? But to work for as a player, I think he'd be horrible. Um, I think Mourinho lost the plot years ago, and I don't think he's he's any good. Really, don't he? Was hmm. he, he won it with Porto, which to win it to win a knockout tournament, he's a, a lot of slices luck. But ever since then, he's he's believed in his own hype. Yeah. And some of the comments he made when he was a Man United manager after the game, Man United to get absolutely battered, and he come on match a day and say he was unlucky. Yeah, yeah he's, he's just, just an odd bloke, isn't he? I was, I, I, that, I was, I got, I got to the he's been yeah. Funny to watch. I got to the point as a fan, it was em- embarrassed to actually listen to some of the stuff. I mean, and I know Fergie used to play mind, and I and you get it with Klopp at times now, and it's it's you know some of the stuff that he'll say. It's all about deflecting and looking to uh, as we go to a final table. Um, uh, but but actually, with Mourinho, genuinely, you were like, I you'd sit there cringing, just going, "Please shut up, just just you know stop speaking." It's just you're not doing the club any any favours whatsoever. You might yeah, think you're playing been. mind games and being clever, but not not at all. Just embarrassing. I won't lie, Lee, I loved it when he was a Man United player. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> I loved it. Was it. Great. I wasn't was it? one little bit. But you also are quite happy if we keep Ollie for as long, aren't you, as well? So Ollie's doing better yeah, now. Just because just, just you've won like four or five games, it's not, it's another false thought. Uh, but it's not, but it's not about, it's actually a bit, it's not about winning. It's not about the games of winning. It's just it's just about the general attitude and feel and vibe around the you know the, the squad. Yeah. And okay, winning does help that massively. Well, if you're if you're getting results, Fernandez is like Salah. He's come in and just been amazing. So That's somebody, Fernandes, if somebody can explain to me, yeah, if anyone can explain to me quite how nobody had gone in for him before, because as much as he is technically 
a ridiculously gifted player as a person as a human being on the pitch you listen you know you listen to him talking to the players he's like having another captain on the on the pitch in the forward line it's incredible yeah you know? and he's making pogba play as well which yeah, is yeah which i'm well, listening i i don't i'd have quite happily said see you to pogba but um but not now though. Yeah, i'm well it's not just an out now then i'm not sure then would actually pay the money at the moment that's the other thing is um so listen i'm not uh, convinced lee you're getting a question from peter uh if uh joby and himself finish first and second would our team make the top three so that's uh that's a question and ace of course says not looking good and i can see why ace is concerned yeah because uh, yeah. uh, he's got the he's got the two hetton guys now on the final table uh yeah, right, so pete doing really well yeah are we going to finish Joby. on the top three? Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this could be. He's lowering his sorry, Steve. Eleven dollars, Steve. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I've got no money. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we're talking about food for next week, guys. That's what's at stake. Right. So, uh, so Pete and Joby are in the lockdown crew, who are currently tenth at the moment. They are. Uh, 178 points off third place which is you guys at the moment 178 but they've still got two in um and they're gonna pick up just about... keep it up to what we've done all all all, all um, the squad's games we've either won it or been out the top three <laughs> we've never had a second or a third yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. So 178. Yeah, I actually think uh second second or third might get might get them into to, two top two top three finishes for Joby and Pete Wigglesworth could well get their team into the third into third place and overtake you guys. Oh, so uh all to play for. So yeah, but I mean, this is a tough one, guys. You've now got to anti-rail Pete Wigglesworth. I mean, it's yeah, it's. <laughs> oh, that's, that's it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but now we want to keep. Yeah, but I certainly. We either, we either win it or we're outside the top three. Let's keep that record. That's fair there. enough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but I must admit, next season from the football point of view, uh, I think it's going to be fascinating because Chelsea are spending money. We know Man City certainly will do. Uh, I can't believe Mourinho is going to spend us. City, City have spent money non stop. No, but do you think next year City will spend money? They've got no Champions League. What players, what what top draw players want to go to City and not? Well, I, I'm still of the I'm still of the belief it's going to get overturned. But um, yeah. No, I but I, yeah, we'll 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 know City. tomorrow. I think they're going to. Yeah, get I think. Two years. It, no, do you really think, think they will? Yeah. Two year. They've given them the two-year punishment to reduce the two-year, like most appeal processes are. I'm not sure. But I think if they, if, if, yeah, but if they, re if they, even if they reduce it, I still still think City are the you know, money talks at the end of the day. And if a player knows that okay, they're going to be out of the Champions League this for one year, but they'll be back in it the following year, and City come along wanting to sign you, knowing that they've got a few aging players along the way as well, um, I think you'll find you know. People, you know, there'll be players. There'll be players that will want to go to City, even if they're not in the Champions League next year. But, I if, think... but if you've got a top draw player and City offering the money, and say any other team that are in the Champions League offering the same money, where are you going to go? And don't forget, you go, you go to Man City, and and fair play, they've done really well, but they haven't got the fan base as others. And don't forget, all the have money might go to Newcastle. So Newcastle might be the team. <laughs> I tell you, oddly, oddly too. But if you're a new player coming in there and you look at the Premier League table and you see that they were, you know, twenty plus points behind first, that might like unless you're watching all of the games, that might be you might have questions over how good their chances are of securing even a league title the following season. I mean, I wouldn't bet against so City certainly. But, Ace, is, um, Ace is saying in the chat all the insider stuff from City people is that is that they're going to win the APL. He thinks. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so, Asa. I'm hearing other things. But... Oh, no, that's just internal. Hey, just got it be yeah. on the... We'll see. I think I think it set a precedent if they did get it overturned. I, and, uh, well, the trouble is, is I honest, you get the they feeling if they they, 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 have, they have they have they have broke financial fair play, and if it gets overturned, the trouble is, is they're not they're not the trouble is they're, they're not the only ones they're not the only ones that have done it. This is the problem is at the moment the. 
the what they you know what they're getting done for seems well there are other clubs doing exactly the same thing is there a team that spent more than city though in the last 10 years or 5 years i very much doubt it psg maybe maybe but psg surely psg must have oh maybe it's not it's not a definite PSG well, got to, well, PSG have got to be ballpark at least. Well, they put they? a bunch in on Neymar, obviously. Yeah, but that was like two or three really massive signings, wasn't it? it wasn't yeah. City have bought a lot of players. A they big have, money. yeah. And they, they haven't really sold anyone for anything good. Uh, obviously, PSG have moved either because they're pretty rubbish. But Man City have. And it would be, it'd be quite funny to see if Newcastle do because if any fans deserve money spent on them yeah it's the newcastle fans. i would love to see newcastle come back with a massively exciting team like that mid-90s yeah, yeah. team they were incredible just don't want it um done unethically yeah uh, there is a lot yeah, of bells, yeah, isn't yeah. There, with what's going on yeah no, but, but i would love newcastle, to see more money going that way like, bit, definitely i think they deserve to to, to be because you've got to feel for the newcastle fans they, 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 they used to fill out the, the stadium when they were in the yeah. championship do you know well, what I mean? And, well, and there's there's plenty of Premier League teams now. If they were in the Championship, they would not fill their stadium, 100. percent But Newcastle did week in week out. We go back to City here now, don't we? So back at City and Main Road used to fill Main Road, didn't they? They were in Division One or whatever. Um, and this, but then the, the same fan base has moved up to Premier League, and they still don't fill the City, do they? The the, the current stadium. It's certainly going to be interesting to... next year. Yeah, because you because if Newcastle do actually that deal does go through and they've got money to spend, um, yeah, you've got the likes of you know Leeds getting promoted and um, it's going to be an interesting you know Premier League next year because you've got Wolves These I think will push on there. again. Sheffield, I mean Sheffield United have had a cracking year oh, this yeah. this year. Yeah, I think Sheffield United incredible. will do very very well to repeat next season. I could see Wolves st- you know still being in that mix. Um, I mean, Everton but, have got to be in in the mix, haven't they? Next year, well, guys. They, yeah, they they, yeah. they 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 believe they believe they will be in some mix. Concrete, I, I suggest. In the middle, in the middle middle table, as ever. I mean, what do they actually do, Everton? I'm sorry, but yeah, they're in the Jimmy they Hoffa do, mix. They do nothing for for fifty years or whatever. Everton needs to be relegated. They really do. <laughs> they just no, they're just a standard mediocre middle Premier League table, aren't they? Well, they only, they only stayed in the Premier League years ago because... Well, Barry Horn. Yeah, well, Hans Sagers took a bung, didn't he? There's no way... There's no way, <laughs> Barry Horn. There's no way He Barry threw Horn. the ball into his own yeah. net. Barry Horn scored in 50 Dez, Dez, get the legal team on the line, oh, quick. Tell you what, they've just... After doing so well for the night league, they've just used our platform as a campaign tool. To oh, have... no, that game is ridiculous. Was... Everton, Everton had to win, and <laughs> about four teams had to lose. And at half time, every team that Everton needed to lose was winning, and Everton were 2 0 down, and they still stayed up. Uh, listen, guys, I, I know that's the way the mind works, right? But actually, a good, strong Everton team would be great for Liverpool. Um, oh, yeah. It mean, would make I Mersey it. derbies, they'd be huge again, the Merseyside derby. Yeah, of course. I mean, that number one. For me, would be Liverpool and Everton top two, you know, fighting it out or every year. But it's, it's not, it's not going to happen. No, it's in the FA Cup finals every year again when we beat them. Yeah, I mean Everton in the uh, the mid eighties. I mean they were. They I was were saying mid to late eighties was a uh, was just, yeah was was ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So um so Tom Banks has said um you know Wilder Wilder has to be an outside chance for manager of the year. I mean, could he, any of you guys see past no Klopp? It normally it normally always gets given to the. The, yeah, the, the winning team uh, gets you know, yeah. The, tends to I be think a yeah, I think Wilder's year. done an amazing job, and I think he's come across very well. You know, uh, I remember uh, watching some of his stuff and thinking, yeah, great guy. But um, I, I, yeah, you can't you can't not give it to Klopp. I think this season of all seasons, of course, yeah, it, it will be it will be it will be tough. Like yeah, you you can't go past uh, Klopp. It's, it's it's probably the biggest points. Score the earliest time that the, the league's been won, and the first time in thirty yeah. years. Both the earliest I think, I think and the, the latest, yeah. Steve. Yeah, I actually think I think the the reality of it is is that the um the manager of the year that's the way it's pretty much always been. But actually, you could argue that there are there are managers that have probably done a better job than you know getting a 
you know, a Man City or a United or a Chelsea or a Liverpool winning the title in keeping certain clubs in the Premier League for as long. I mean, Sean Dyche at Burnley, to have kept Burnley up, you know, in the Premier League for as long as they have now. And how long Eddie Howard yeah. kept, kept Bournemouth up before, well, I don't know whether three points a day is going to be, you know, is going to be enough. Um, you know, it's looking ask. slim because it's, it's a tough, a really tough running. But um, obviously, you know, from my point of view, Bournemouth is my local team now and it's great for the area if you've got a Premier League side. When I was living in Southampton, felt exactly, I mean, I was in, living in Southampton when Saints got relegated and, you know, it, it just, it's disastrous for the, for the local well, area. Listen, I had a, I had a beer with Scouse uh, at halftime of the first Liverpool game of the season. Do you remember Scouse? Norwich, yeah, uh, and we were four 0 up at half time, and they played reasonably well. They had a couple of half chances, um, but uh, I have to smile at their manager, bless his cotton socks, who every week comes out and says, "You can't expect us to compete." You know, it's like I don't know how you could play for a manager that says that every single week. Yeah, that shouldn't be said. At the end of the day, it's no, eleven, it's 11 in that. every game. It's eleven yeah. be eleven in every game, so you. It's, You've got to you've got to try and win your battles. Well, it's the number one. Yeah. It's the number one uh, requirement in the Premier League. You got to battle for everything. I don't care so, who, who guys, you are. You got to battle. So interesting. So Ace has just posted. Wow, just seen who's top of the transfer fees in the last five years. He said so. City a second, Barcelona a third, Man United a fourth, PSG a fifth, and Chelsea a sixth. So who's who's first then? He's not posted up who's first yet. So City is second. No. City, Barca, Man United, PSG and Chelsea in the last five transfers in the last five years. Transfer fees in the last five years. All right. Oh, transfer Who yeah, spent so more money then? This is obviously, this is, he's probably looking at net then, is he rather? No, 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 no this definitely isn't net. He's not, look, no. he's not looking at net there. Because City would be, w w you know, way. So who spent, so who spent more money than any of those in the last five years then? Oh, it'll be one of the Japanese clubs, surely, because they were paying silly money for... Well, the oh, chi right, Chinese yeah, sure. have spent a bunch of money, but I wouldn't have thought they were anywhere near those sort of figures. I don't know. Well, um, you have to post... Yeah, you have to post... post up, yeah, you have to post up, basically, because we, we're, we're struggling, so... Yeah, the Chinese... Real, well, Real. Uh, Tom Banks has said Real, is it? So is it, has Real spent that yeah, much? That's, Madrid, that's, the, yeah. that's not yeah. the... Uh, that, that isn't the punchline that Asa would be looking for there, I'd have thought. He's probably he's probably trying to do Liverpool, but he doesn't realise that. Well, Real Real must have spent more than Real must have spent more than Chelsea and and you know or must must yeah. have spent more than Chelsea then surely. Liverpool on, so, uh, on net on net transfer spend over the last five years since this Klopp joined probably twelfth or thirteenth in the Premier League net. Oh wow, hang on, Atletico is seventh, Inter Milan eighth, Real Madrid ninth, Monaco tenth. I suppose Real haven't actually spent on much Galacticos. They bought Eden Hazard, but um, I still, still don't know who's first Liverpool. then. Right, Asa, if it's really it can't be Liverpool. Liverpool. And Liverpool. Oh, yeah, okay. Because <laughs> I had that saved. That Liverpool are 14 for net spend. Yeah, in the Premier League. On net spend. Yeah. Is that yeah, in the so Premier League net. or globally? Yes. Yeah, the last five years. In the Premier League. So, I mean, yeah, you know. I, I had that on me. Oh, Juventus. Me, so. Yeah, of course, they've uh, they so the, spent a bunch so the on site, Ronaldo. And... So the site Ace has gone to, so, yeah, says, uh, shocked uh, me yeah, too. He yeah, said yeah. Juventus are top. Well, they didn't spend how much? Ronaldo only cost them about 90 million, but have they spent a but lot again, more? It, it's not really it's not really something you can go on anyway, that, that sort of spend. No, no. It's surely against what, obviously, the gross, isn't it, against what you sold as well? Uh, the net sure, thing is, you guys have you good. guys have obviously got a good net because you because well partly because your Coutinho deal. Yeah, um, but, but we've also sold back as well for twenty next year. Well, like with the Coutinho <laughs> yeah, deal, yeah. he sold Coutinho to buy Van Dijk and who's the other player? But look, we sold Danny Ings for twenty million to Southampton. We sold yeah, uh, Jordan Ibe for fifteen million to Bournemouth. Um, we've you know we we. Make a yeah, but to be honest, you did players. you did sign one or two, you did make one or two signings from Southampton as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Oh, we, Southampton have been all there. We've had great value. Dip two, aren't they? Yeah. Mane, Van Dijk. I mean, where, where did where did oh, Klein end up? Kleine. Still where did Klein end up? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he's been Is he still in Liverpool? Yeah, yeah. Has so he really? He'll go, out, okay. he'll go out this season. Sure, he'll go out this. Season. No, well, he's he's never going to get into the he's never going to get into the team no. ahead of the two you've got there now, the youngsters, is he? Really? Yeah, yeah. He he. He'd appreciate that. Well, that, yeah, that, he must that, know. That yeah, he's got is ridiculously good. And 
you must be gutted for him because any other Premier League team he'd probably walk into. And he, he's not going to get past Trent because Trent's probably the best in the world. Yeah. Right well, they were yeah. talking. They were talking the other day, saying, "Well, would Trent eventually move further upfield to accommodate?" But I don't know whether that would be the case. Yeah, what do you What do you do as a young? Anywhere. So, so here's the interesting. Nico, Nico Williams. It's Nico Williams we're talking about, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. Nico Williams. So, thinks so, more likely to go midfield. So, he's, uh, he's, he's a young yeah. Wrexham lad, believe it or not. So here's the question. So here's the question. Then you know what you've got in front of you is not going anywhere. You know, um, for your career, what do you do? Do you do you stay at Liverpool do you, or do you ultimately think okay I'm going to have to move at some point here to to get the games that I, I deserve I mean what well, what wish, do you do bizarre is Nico Williams is the one that's going to go into the midfield not Trent I mean I think Nico you've got Williams is more attacking than, you've than got, Trent believe it or not listen you've got a bit that maybe you know Trent or maybe Nico maybe one of them will reposition but I actually think that's what what's sort of happening with the game now is that it's become much more of a squad based game uh, I think it feels a little more like American football today than it ever has done before. So, like five, ten years ago, if you weren't in the first eleven, you know, you weren't you weren't a player. Um, but today, I think it's more about the first eighteen, really. And there is a lot of rotation. I think rotation is a normal part of the game now. And I could definitely see Nico Williams getting games. So I suppose the question he'd have to ask himself is, you know, am am I happy with that sort of scenario? Pulling in a decent salary at a club that you know, can credibly challenge for all of the big trophies. Well, they've put in, they've got, obviously with the new uh, substitutions, now it's five five per game. It does open up the squad more, doesn't it? So you, you, yeah. you can utilise more people. I think it, I think it's a good, um, surprisingly from the FA, FA or the, the Premier League, whoever decided, I think it's a good addition, that extra substitutions. Gets more game time for, for the mediocre players or the people that wouldn't yeah. actually have too much game time in the starting eleven. Trouble just... is, is if you um if you talk to anybody outside the top six or yeah, top it's eight tough. It's tough. of the clubs, and they'll tell you it's 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 just swinging the balance even more in, right. in towards the big the big clubs. Um, I mean, uh, we can get it then, really. we we could get we could get Natalie Bromley uh, on the show talking about Burnley, where during this lockdown, Burnley at times haven't even been able to name a full substitutes bench. Um, now, obviously. That's only because it's been thrown on them. A number of their players have injured or, or have, are out of contract and decided not to renew. So I guess if you knew it was going to happen in the new season, you can organise a bit more for it. But financially, I don't know whether it's helpful or not. Maybe I suppose if you can plan for it, it's okay. But um, it certainly benefits the fact that actually, yeah, if it's five substitutes, that, yeah. that you you can have the big the big teams will stockpile even more of the. You know, uh, uh, the quality players knowing that they could pretty much freshen up half their team um, each game. Yeah. So, I mean, what, 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 what do you do with that then? If, if it does favour the the, uh, the top six or eight, whatever, then how would you change it again to, to favour? Well, it was only ever supposed to be a temporary thing. It's the same as the drinks breaks was only supposed yeah, to be a temporary thing. Yeah, drinks breaks are a joke, aren't they? A, a temporary well, thing, you drinks know. Drinks breaks oh, being brought yeah. in by Sky so they can put an advert in. Next That's week. what I thought initially. They've got to get quashed, though, so haven't they? Quenched. Yeah, I think I think yeah. that the subs will go back to normal <laughs> yeah. next year as well. They've got to because it, it 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 isn't fair on the on the the, the, the lower teams because it really does m- massive advantage for the top six who have the big big squads. Yeah. I'm saying that there's not a top six anymore, really, is there? No, the well, I've said this before, Steve. I, it used to be you know, if you think it used to be the top, the big four, and then that's now kind of extended to the big six. But actually, the big six now also includes. Yeah, you, know, you think you've got the likes of Wolves Leicester and Sheffield United there. vying for vying for their, you know. So what? Yeah, well, I'm not even sure what kind of counts. And obviously Leicester have have jumped into not just the big six, but the big, you know, the top four. Although they're having a shocker, aren't they? I mean, yeah. I mean, the way it's looking, Leicester. Give Man United the Champions League spot. What's going on? I mean, it's it's I've ne- it's just it's just insane. I mean, like Listen. Leicester. You'd have said before the lockdown, you'd have said Leicester were absolutely. Shoe in, locked, locked in for a Champions League place next season. That's and right. now you well, look at it and go, really? Yeah. yeah. Listen, everyone's talking about the, than, talking about the top four. Than, you've, got the, um, you've got UEFA or FIFA, whatever it is, kicking Man City out. Just felt Man United getting a Champions League. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> listen, guys. Listen, guys. Talking about the top four, Erzy right? He wants to know for his boys. Okay, where do the Hetton mob need to finish? Asking from a boys, right? So. Lee, right. So the situation advise? is this. Yeah, we can. So the situation is this: that they are, 
they are 119 points off catching catching jfs um so the two of them are left in um i've just got to do some quick numbers on this they've absolutely smashed uh, it they've had a great run even, think, if, even I, if you don't make it tonight i think they've had a great run what, what i'm pretty sure uh right so they so if they both busted next they pick up 139 less less their score of 50 so they need to do 100 100 they need to do 169 so uh they roughly they roughly need a if they both finish fourth if they finish fourth and fifth they might do it it depends which order they finish in as well because one of them's got a low score of 20 and the other's got a low score of 30 so there's a few variables in here but basically if they both got in the top five i think that might well be enough so survive um, it, it's another, close it's around another there. two yeah. or three exit uh exits guys yeah. and uh, trouble they've got is gary is obviously the sh well they're both they're the two short stacks yeah, Ryan's, at this Ryan's table now. Shorts, isn't he? Yeah. So, so Gary's even shorter. Ace, so. Aces teams bottled it then, like Man City. Is that the <laughs> <laughs> well, that is the other variable. Asa is at home back in Manchester, basically putting needles into northeastern dolls <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> and look, it's 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 northeast, so it's Newcastle coming to the forwards as well, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. I like yeah. it. I'd quite like that story yeah. if the uh, half the Liverpool team weren't on the sidelines. I just love a comeback. I, I, anyone that comes from behind to win, I think it's a great, great story. But... We've seen that so many times on a Sunday night where it's uh, someone's gone on and won it, and um, uh, yeah, and either sometimes completely out of the out of the blue, you're not even expecting, when others know what they've exactly what they've got to do and they've gone to got to win it on a Sunday night. It's uh, it's made it exciting for us to, uh, to watch. That's for sure. Paul Azar will be just um, distraught. He's put a lot of effort in this week. He's had some good results. <laughs> I'm done, well, the too. trouble is, is they can they the, the difficulty for them both here is because they're the two short stack. If they had some chips, it would be a different equation here. But um, they've got to hope that the others decide to go at it. Um, what are the blinds, blinds. See, see, Gary's only got what three and a half bigs. Um and he's just and Ryan's got yeah, about seven and I'm Ryan's got seven Gary. bigs. So yeah. I mean if the others if the others kind of know what's going on here, um and obviously Pete Wigglesworth and Joby are also both vying to possibly get into third place ahead of you guys as well. And they're both still in. Um yeah. and I Scotty. think it's also Gary can still win the MVP. Uh, we worked out he needs 105 points for that, which means he oh, needs he's, a uh, he's, he's top two finish. Club. This could dramatically change things. Peter, Peter Wigglesworth. There we go. Let's do it. Is the, is the chip leader going to get involved? Gary Young. He's having a think. Can't believe he will. Ace 10 against Whoa, Ace 9. Gary's look at that. Gary's in a good, good chop. I think the ten's going to score it, and it chops. No, it oh, chops it, it has chopped. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Minutes, minute the, the the board's paired with the king jack over yeah, over the done. kickers. It's, it's, it's going to be done. So it's another thing with with the like I like the parts. I don't mind the parts pro grid software, but it does kick you out quite quick if you lose, especially on your phone. Yeah, you don't get a <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't get a chance left, to do left, anything. Do you? What happened there? I was in front <laughs> yeah, of yeah. the river. Suddenly it's kicked me out. It's as if like it's as if like going, you've lost. Get the get away. Yeah, Off you go. Right. <laughs> it's like as if you were playing poker for EMS. You, you're just you're out. You know, if you haven't hit yeah. the grade, you're out. Yeah, no, it's not, it's not so bad on you know, the computer if you see laptop or whatever. Uh, but on your phone, it just it just sets it off. You know? So I heard um, I heard today, and I don't know whether you guys will like this or not like this, but um, I've they've had for about six months now vertical tables on the cash games. So when you're playing on your phone, you play with a, effectively a vertical table yeah, rather than having to turn your phone. Like a, a menu and the they side, and they are are very soon bringing that in for tournaments as well. So basically, you can play. What they're saying is you can play with with your thumb effectively. I like it. Um, Assuming it plays so, uh, well, that could be great. Yeah, yeah so, and then so, also uh, one in that little men mini menu on the side, it shows where the action is as well. So you don't have to click back onto the table to see what's happening. You can kind of see it. So, do you play a lot menu. on? Do you play a lot on? Your, yeah, do you play a lot on your phone then, Andy? Is that your your choice at the no, moment? Not, no, no, I'd rather sit. No, I'd rather sit down on 
you know, in front of a screen. But um, obviously, I, I work away quite a bit, so sometimes the signal's rubbish, the the Wi-Fi's crap, or whatever. Um, I do end up having yeah. to play on my phone. But yeah, I, I, I'm, I don't multi-table often either. But I've just seen is a good little menu that they've got there that you don't have to click back onto your table to yeah. see what's going on. What line of business are you in, Andy, that you, you're working away quite a lot? Oh, um, telecoms. So we do telecoms installations. Ah, okay. Um, so I haven't stopped, obviously, with the lockdown and that. Yeah. Um, after your site visits, etc. I was going to say, it's got a, a, a very difficult sort of uh, segment during the lockdown because uh, the... Uh, you know, I guess the the draw on resources has been enormous. I don't know whether the infrastructure was able to cope with it. Um, well, I yeah, know this is it. One of the rollouts we're doing now is fibre to the premises, which you've probably seen going on locally amongst yourselves. Um, yeah. And that is a big part of it because yeah. everyone's at home. Wow. The Ace King versus Ace Queen <laughs> versus Sevens. And the Sevens are going to hold. Seven's we're going to lose Ryan and Salvatore. Oh, nice hand, Joby. Nice. Yeah. And oh, Ryan, nice unfortunately, had le Ryan had <laughs> less um, chips, so unfortunately, he's bust uh, in seventh, which means I can now work out yeah, exactly inevitably what it is. As, as more people are at home working, yeah. whatever the bandwidth um, does get does get used up, so people are. Yeah, Des would Des would like to apologise for if he's if he's taken up the bandwidth for most of most of what, the UK in the past. Listen, three I don't, I don't want to. You know, I'm not going to. I'm not going to name any names, right? But uh, on the street, on the street, I kid you not. I've told Lee this already, but on our street, <laughs> everybody is. All of the neighbours are in a WhatsApp group, right? And uh, about two weeks into the APAT show, right? Uh, one woman who who shall not be named because she does live right next door right put up a post or is anybody else having any problems with the internet it seems to go at about 10 o'clock every evening and it's really really <laughs> bad on the weekends I don't know. yeah yeah like the people up the street are going yeah we're having the same go, sean say 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 we're having the same problems yeah yeah fine it's, it's like fine. um it's like the uh, the energy companies get major draws don't they uh, well, they used to say in the 80s, 90s with um, commercial breaks for EastEnders or Coronation Street. So everyone put the kettle on at the same time. So they'd yeah. have a massive draw. Yeah, that, that's it. That advert, advert break. And it's just um, like a spike in, in the, the need, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I went up to bed one night uh, after the show and Sean said, how did everything go? I said, yeah, it was, it was fine, you know, because we've had a few problems here and there, but generally we've been good. And uh, she said, yeah, because this WhatsApp's just arrived. It's like the fucking whole neighborhood was out <laughs> of their internet. So, But I don't get it because, I mean, I'm play, paying Virgin Media a small fortune for what is meant to be like 220 gigs of download and like 20 or 30 gigs of upload. So I don't understand when I'm not using that amount. 220 gig? Uh, no. uh, megs, rather. Megs. No, yeah. Down, yeah. yeah gigs would be a big pipe. <laughs> that would be a bigger pipe. Yeah, well, I'm not going to go pipe. there. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, are you saying that the neighbourhood is using up my... Are we all sharing from the same pipe? I mean, that doesn't well, even that's, sound it healthy. Does, it does, yeah, I know, it does eventually go... To, that's what, and that's why they're trying to bring out this um, fibre to the premises. So everyone's going to have a lot more capability. You okay. Know? Well, so um, basically, Ace has, Ace has asked the question of the night now, which is where does Gary need to finish? Here we then? go. Okay, so, here we go. Um, so Gary now, Gary now needs to match what he needed for to win MVP, which was a top two finish. He needs a top two finish uh, for the Hetton <laughs> Mob to overtake uh, JFS now. Top two. So needs a top two oh, finish sorry, uh, to do that. And uh, Joby and Pete uh, need to just keep on doing what they're doing at the moment to try and squeeze into third third place. Yeah, sorry, Mister Ryan's exit there. Uh... It was uh, Ace King versus Ace Queen versus Sevens, sevens. of Joby, I think it was, and the Sevens uh, held. Oh, so Ryan was above the Sevens, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it it Gary's well got be, a top yeah. two stack, Lee. He's got a top two stack, and this might, uh, yeah, there we go. He's just landed. Oh, well, Gary, Gary's the Gary's the short stack, so he's um. Oh, sorry, Gary Roberts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, I was looking yeah. at Gary. Two, two Garys stack. on the board. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I made that error. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Looking at the wrong Gary. Got a bloody microphone yeah, so, in my way here. <laughs> but we've lost another player, so he is getting a little bit closer to that, but he's going to... Yeah, he's, he's 
gonna need to do something with his uh okay. his chips, I think here. Oh, but meanwhile, that's Joby. Anyway, bit of excitement. Hey, yeah. well, yeah, Joby and uh, Joby and Pete are now both in the top four, guys. I'm starting to think they might um, they might be nicking third place from me here. Oh dear, Gary shoved it. <laughs> get it I say, I was banking on those eleven bucks. No, <laughs> 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 uh, uh, yeah, but uh, as Steve said, it would be good uh, if we only if you only have a place when we win. That, that's a good yeah. Place. Stop. Well, I think uh, I think Scouts was uh, he was banking on that for uh, for food for the week. Uh, yeah, what what is that? Bed, he? Is he is he not there? You there, Stevie? No, I'm no, still here. Still there here. he is. He's still there. What is that? What is that fish and chip shop? The Chinese one opposite Anfield? Because Mike Butlin blesses cotton socks. He swears by them. Oh, there's there's loads of chips. Is it Fung or Lee Fung or something like that? But he loves yeah, them. that's one of lung, them. Not Lung Fung, is it? Is it Lung Fung? Oh, that is just it's right outside the uh, the, the cop entrance to exactly. Anfield. Yeah, there's quite a few, but I, I generally don't use them because the queues are always yeah. out the yeah, door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'd rather just get the supporters club and get a pint. Yeah. So. You love the supporters club, don't you? Have, you, have you been oh, there, Dad? Fantastic. To where the supporters club. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, and Steve, does Steve take it in? Did he? Yeah, on he did. Oh, Grace, yeah. Even Brian Yates loves it. We took him there. Top place. Oh. The oh, Steve's gone the loo. You can tell he's echoed. I'll tell you what, see, it's the only place <laughs> It's the only place in Britain that you can walk in and see a couple of 11-year-olds enjoying a couple of pints. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have no, never, I watch. have never seen anything like it. I watched the um, the last one I watched in there was the Roma. I think it was the sem was it the semi final yeah. on the way to we we lost to Madrid. That was a crazy game, like seven oh, six or something, right? Yeah, we were against Allison when we yeah. was, we scored like four or five past Allison, whenever that was. What a game! No, he's only lost one league game at Anfield since then. <laughs> Allison's only lost one, hasn't he? Ah, has he? The one before well, that Watford he played for Roma. Bloody Madrid one! He lost the Madrid one, the Atletico Madrid one. Oh no! No, no so, it was um, the other guy, wasn't it? No, we didn't, we didn't Adrian was in that night. That, did we? Yeah. So Joby and uh, Joby and Pete need they need a second and a third minimum to to beat you guys second into third place. Third. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's happening. Isn't it? They can't. <laughs> they can't mess it up, yeah. Well, to be honest, he might even be a, a first and a fourth might be enough as well. Yeah, so, um, I mean. but it's highly unlikely they'll mess that up on it. That sounds to me like you're giving it a bit of a yeah yeah oh yeah this this is this is done. He does yeah. that. <laughs> yeah yeah. He, he cry. He tries to cry it in all the time. <laughs> He's stirring it just in case they're listening. We know Pete's on. I don't know about Joby. Uh, I actually saw Karen. Karen played in this, I think, as well earlier on. Um, yeah. I have rarely have seen them both playing. Normally, it's one or the other uh, when they. They've been playing. They've got, got a little one, so. No, they've got. Oh, here we go. Oh, as Pete's all in, and he's gonna. He's hit. Got to be a three. No three. Pete's gonna double. Well, he, but he's more importantly, he's yeah, gonna he's bust Gary. Gary, which yeah. means now Gary Roberts needs uh needs one of these two to bust. Um, and uh, he's gonna get take down the team event, but it looks like. Uh, Pete and Joby now are going to finish. Uh, this team are going to finish in third place ahead of the yeah. Purple Ackies. Well played. Unlucky well played lads. Around, like, um, and what, what a turn. I was if Gary turns this over and gets the win. Well, and he needs um, second, right? So he just needs to see one of them go. And of course, yeah, it's I mean, a, I mean, take the win for the team. Yeah, and, it'd be incredible. And obviously, but, it turns around third as well. It'd be a right turn up. Yeah, I'm assuming you... Gary. I'm assuming Gary knows they're on the same team. So there's basically there's <laughs> this is. Well, how do you play he's this just, dynamic? He's got, you so you he get your chips in. Yeah, you shove your chips yeah. in. Is <laughs> what, what you do. Yeah. You know, so Ace you've got to start playing fairly puking. aggro. Ace is saying not puking here at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, poor Acer. Oh, he's, had, he's had a good run. He said he can, uh, he can, he can have a week off. Asa, you keep <laughs> your puke for tomorrow, mate. You're going to need all of that uh, in the morning. Yeah. Here we yeah, go. Yeah. Oh, Joby's <laughs> never calling this. That's just a bit <laughs> of passing. No That's a passing chance. of chips there. There is no way is Joby calling this. Not a chance. He's, 
giving it the old countdown. <laughs> They're talking to each other on the phone. Aren't you? Never oh, happened. Oh, don't say that. I'll tell happen. you though, lads, if you're listening, if you're folding aces or kings or queens or anything, oh, be yeah, very good, careful. Good, yeah, this is good the thing luck. about the yeah. collusion with team games. What happens if you get aces? You, you, you know, you, you're if you fold them, you're in trouble. Because I know this is it. it I, does. Mean, I, had it in, I remember having it in Blackpool with a, a team game with... Um, with uh, Gary Pennicott and his, his boys, you know, f- um, from the Hendon mob. Uh, and yeah, they, you can get those aces. You have to fold because one of your boys has shoved in front of you. Oh, so yeah, but the, the problem here is you don't it's get not allowed, are you? It's like, you know, it'll be picked out by a compliance team. Oh, oh Gary shoved with Jack 8 and oh, Queen. He's, he's hit an he's eight. Eight. eight or a Jack. He's an 8 or a Jack. Oh. oh no. Wow. Oh. What does it mean, Lee? Well, that is uh, pretty much going to mean if we uh, we're going to assume. So uh, close. Going to do the maths here. I've got guys. to imagine these. I imagine these guys are g- going to get their chips in quite quick here as teammates I now. Think that's an unlucky uh, Gary. Well played, though. Well, there's cash. There's cash up front. So you got 133 for the winner, 95. So it's not a huge, not a huge difference. He's, he's done one of them individually. He'll have a nice little cash there, won't he? But um, unfortunately, the team might not make it. That is unlucky because you know. Can't do much more than that. Don't get no. yourself to that position. No, what a run! But these two guys here to, to final them, uh, to go heads up as, yeah. a, as a team, you know, Fantastic. that's an achievement in itself, isn't it? Fantastic. Yeah, I don't know if that's happened before. Having two team members going heads up. No, I think I think we've it uh, eat my stack. Um, I think they've done it a couple of times in in a few few tournaments with it because they had a couple of weeks where they were absolutely flying. So um, uh-huh. yeah, they've managed to do it. So I'm. Pretty much with these guys just deciding who's going to finish where or what here now can confirm that uh, the Hetton mob, uh, 725.91. Oh. JFS, 728.37. So they've yes, won they it by they two, 2.4 uh, points. Oh and uh, the lockdown crew... Uh, have ended up comfortably in third place in the end, knocking Purple Ackies <laughs> down into into fourth. Wow! Yes. Um, I'd rather, I'd rather over, take that eleven bucks. Yeah. Over in the MVP, um, it's looking like uh, Don Logan is going to win that, and he's won that by two point nine two. Wow! Yes. Oh, well done for Don. the for the Great week. Job, Don. Don's held on. Don's held on to that. Uh, Gary Roberts were, from the Het Mob will finish in second. Neville Harrington, who's not got a squad. Neville's quite a consistent player playing APAT, but uh, yeah. not, not in the squad. And uh, then Joby and Asa are after that, depending on where Joby finishes here now. But uh, we'll obviously watch this one, <laughs> this one play out. But yeah. That's an awesome set of results. Asa says, I don't think I'm going to need any exercise for a few weeks. So he's obviously uh, he's been, been going through in the mill, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah. I guess yeah, they're in the end. Definitely. Uh, well, well, well so, done. um, yeah, so next week is um is week fifteen of poker squads. And 15. it's also gonna be it's also gonna be the last week that we have our current schedule of um of other events. Some is some is staying, oh, but we will we go, be having Lee. a little bit as it's uh, all in. Oh, it doesn't matter because he's he's already hit he's already hit the full house. Yeah. So um Oh yeah. Yeah. Boom. Boom. So uh, so Joby's won that. Uh Joby picks up $133. Pete Wigglesworth finished second for 95. Well into Gary as well. Yeah, so as I was just saying, so we are this yeah. this week coming now is the last week of the current schedule. After week 15 of everything, we are gonna have a bit of a change around. Uh we posted up about the added value for those at the top of the rankings. They're gonna get them into some of the WPT World <laughs> Online Championship events. So that'll be great. But we're also gonna have a little bit of a rejig of some of the schedule, uh, just to make it a bit more um playable for people with uh, obviously because things have, have changed in the last few weeks for people so um keep keep your eyes appeal for that and we'll update you in the next week fantastic sounds good uh, lee thank you for that so uh boys we have reached the end of our journey tonight thank you for uh, being with us for the whole evening andy and steve i uh, hope you had a bit of fun yeah enjoyed that lovely good stuff has scouts back from the loo yet is he still in there <laughs> does he have a little kettle if it seems to me like he has a little kettle in there the <laughs> <laughs> i lived with a guy once uh, as you, there was four of us in the house and he, he, this one bloke used to regularly fall asleep on the loo yeah not 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 great not great i have to say so uh thank you boys for being with us all night thank you guys out there for listening in and for playing it has been a blast as lee said there is poker throughout 
um, next week, as you will well know by now. Uh, and we are going to be back on the weekend with uh, the APAT show to uh, follow, I guess, squads primarily to a finale next week. And I dare say it'll be as close as it always is. So uh, good luck to you guys during the week. I think that's it, guys. I think that's an over and out, right? Thanks, Des. Thanks, Thanks, Lee. Thanks, guys. Cheers, boys. Bye-bye. Bye.